thumbs up the team. Come on, Marco. Fuck them. Let's go. <laughs> Marco. Marco. I got to get the bag. Yes. Do you like me? <laughs> Yeehaw. It's bull wrangling time. What's up, everybody? We're back. Make sure you click like on the stream. Thumbs up the ting. Thumbs up the ting. And uh, we're back, man. You're wrong. You're fucking poor. What's up, everybody in the chat? I'm going to read it backwards. Morgan, Gabby, Bad Dog, Shadow, Andrew, Kilikina, Meek, Eliza. Too many people to name. Okay. Uh, let me just say, this is, I know this is unprecedented, okay? It is the third time that we it's the third building fortunes radio dedicated stream in a row it's heating up to new levels and i will get back to the other uh non building fortunes radio mlm content but i've just been having too much fun with scott and peter now normally normally saturday would be the day tonight would be the day where we react to building fortunes radio and we will and we will because they are live right now, and I checked to make sure they were live right now, and sure enough, they are doing a show called, let's pull it up here, <laughs> they are doing a show called Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles and MLM Guest Roast Anti-MLM Troll, and I did tune in for just a second to see what they were saying, and lo and behold, they're having a meltdown. So, very excited about that, and... You know, if it weren't for the fact that they did an extra show last week, they're ramping it up. They did an extra show last week with a gentleman named Glenn. And Glenn brought such a smile to my face with uh, the way he just absolutely bodied Scott and Peter on their own show. I have never, I never thought I would see the day where Scott and Peter actually had someone on their show with the balls to press them and challenge them and not back down. And the way I, I think Alex FPV said it best in the comments of that last stream, raw dogged them on their own show. Dude, I can't wait. Yeah, they're having a meltdown? No, it can't be. Glenn absolutely fucking bodied them. So it was very good, very fun. And Specs in the chat asks, how much is it to thumbs up the stream? Well, you may be stunned to know that it's actually free. So go ahead and hit that thumbs up on the stream. Thumbs up the team. And let's get it, let's get it popping, let's get it rocking. And uh, Streamlabs link is in the chat if you want to support, if you want to become a member, if you want to gift memberships, that's always great too. You know, build the cult up, build the community, build up the goons. Anyways, I called this stream The Legend of Glenn because not only am I sure Scott and Peter uh, are going to talk about Glenn on the stream, but I was also hoping to get Glenn on as a guest on this stream. Now, I messaged Glenn hours ago, but it was like 6 a.m. in Australia. So literally five minutes before I clicked start stream, he responded to me. Um, and I just, I, he just sent another one. Let me see. Uh, okay, let's see. Okay, let me see. All right, so this, I mean, I'm still gonna call this stream the legend of Glenn because we're reacting to what happened with Glenn last a uh, few days ago. But Glenn just messaged me, and I forgot that because of the time difference in Australia, they're essentially in the future. Michael K. Thumbs up the stream, MFERF. Thank you, Michael K. I appreciate you. So Glenn says that because, uh, you know, I didn't really realize this, but tomorrow is, it's already Sunday in Australia. And tomorrow is also Mother's Day. So Glenn said... Don't be sad. I know. I know. I know. Please stay with me. Where's the fucking thing? Wrong one. Where's the... Glenn says that he's not available to call in tonight. He says he's not available to call in tonight, but that he wants to have a private one-on-one -on -one 
call with me first before we do a public one. I respect that. He also says that he's going on Building Fortunes Radio again tomorrow. So they're doing another Marco-inspired stream versus Glenn tomorrow. Is, is it Christmas? Is it my birthday? I mean, it's the gift that keeps on giving. So shout out to Glenn. We're going to keep it rolling, and we will have Glenn on next week, and I totally respect that he's doing the Mother's Day thing. Michael K., thank you for dropping the super chat. If you, if you want to be like Michael K., he's, you know, he's a mod. He got that blue wrench. Now, you could have a blue wrench too, but the people with the blue wrenches, let me tell you, in some cases, they have killed other people to get those wrenches. I'm just keeping it straight. Keeping it honest. I take responsibility. They have taken responsibility and done what they needed to in order to get that blue wrench. And that means committing the utmost level of loyalty to this cult. In some cases, they have just outright used political bribery, meaning Streamlabs link in the chat. Wrong button, wrong button. To get those wrenches. All right? So just keep that in mind. Just keep that in mind. All right. It's Hanukkah at this point. Eight crazy nights of BFR. Yeah, no kidding. So anyways, before we get into it, thumbs up the stream. Please and thank you. I'm still getting used to the new layout since I added the whole Scott and Peter page on the, uh, on the stream deck. Thumbs up the team. Um, you were going to ask what you need to do one because I think I'm worthy. There, there, are no, there are no rules to getting one. There are, there's no official guidebook to getting one. It just has to happen from God, okay? It has to be, you know, there has to be either an overwhelming community outcry for it, a mutiny. There, you must tithe to the cult. You must pay your goon taxes. Um, you know, Streamlabs link in the chat to pay the goon tax. And you must also be committed. Thumbs up the ting. Uh, watch the streams. Be active in the chat. All those things. So are you talking, are you running a tool scam talking about wrenches? So true. So true. So we appreciate the mods. And this shirt is from alwaysmarcomerch.com, Losing Fortunes Radio. You see it right there. Before we listen to the episode, because they have 30 minutes remaining on their episode, they're still, tech, they're still live right now. And, I, you know, I like to run it from the beginning so we can watch it. By the way, can one of you guys, hold on. I think I, I, think I actually can find it. Thank you, Lily. Fill up the dono goal. Fill it right on up. Let me see something. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Can't even close the app. So one of you guys gave me a link to this iHeartRadio website uh, for Building Fortunes Radio where you, can, where you can listen to their shows. But I don't know how long it takes for them to upload the new episodes. Like, as soon as the, this one on actual blog talk radio is done, it'll be available for me to listen to from the beginning. But there's also this website. Sorry, this is blog talk radio. There's also the um, iHeartRadio, and there's also the... Fuck, what's the name of it? Oh, yeah. Okay, it's this one. And then there's also the Building Fortunes Radio website. Whoa. Wow. Jaina Miller. You're fucking cold. Marco. Yes. Yeehaw. It's bull wrangling time. Marco. Marco. Play some more Marco. Remember Marco? You know everything. Remember? Remember Marco? You know everything. <laughs> Thank you, Jaina Miller, for gifting... Five memberships to the cult. Let's see. She's rising up through the ranks of the cult. She gifted. Let's see who received the gifts. Bad Dog Sports got a gift. It's about time. Uh, Bad Dog Sports th uh, got, a, got a membership. Another day, Susie Nakash, uh, Max Blank, Dylan Honey. Is that five? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Jana Miller. Everybody thank Jana Miller. Bad Dog says, what, uh, you'll make more money thumbs upping the ting than 99% of people in MLMs. So true. My boyfriend goes, that's not a real background, right? It could be a real background. 
if y'all gift memberships and hit the super chat and subscribe to the Patreon and join as a member and hit the Streamlabs link in the chat, it could be. Could be a real background. I don't know. NPAS is so true. One time we had to sacrifice Marco's roommate, Bannon, to mod someone. This is actually true. Many, many souls have been claimed in the quest for modship. So when you see those mods in the chat, at them and salute them with the salute emoji because they've really, they've been pulling plows on the cult commune for a long time, picking up, you know, twigs and berries and going down to the river to pull water from the, uh, you know, in a bucket from the river, churning butter, going to the well to make sure it's clean and get water from there. Um, lots and lots of different cult related um, chores and activities that go into that go into that. So you know, it's definitely no cakewalk, and it's 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 not a small deal. You know, it's a big deal. All right, so I'm not sure what site is the best. Uh, certainly not this site. The Scott Johnson's radio show site is definitely not the best one. Uh, it has the worst player, and then this Blog Talk radio site is a bit better, but you can't adjust the speed at which you listen to it. And the iHeartRadio one, I think, has the friendliest interface, but there's ads. Let me see if this works. Woo! Welcome. Yeah, this is the best one. You can adjust the playback speed, and you can scrub, and it has, like, a friendly player. So I'm going to use this one, and I might even bookmark this page. So we've got 27 minutes before it's time for BFR. Michael K. says, Marco, do you think it'll be the year 2035? And we will still be mods and you will still be streaming. We'll see. We'll see what the bag is saying, Michael K. Hopefully. What's Marco's official cult title? The Emperor. Thank Eliza. I'm hearing Eliza for mod in the chat. Tears of joy, tears of joy, tears of joy. Do we call a vote? We could do a poll. We could do a poll for Eliza to become a mod. We could. We could. We could. A bad dog. Stop the MA tools game at yahoo.com. So true. So I'm going to have to carry this, which I'm, I'm pretty confident I can do. Carry this for uh, 25 minutes or whatever, however long it is, before we cover Building Fortunes Radio. Um, <laughs> why do they title it Troll? Everyone who listens to their show knows they're talking about you. <laughs> Chris G, thank you, Eliza, for gifting a membership to Chris G as I well. Thank you. Thank you, Eliza, for gifting. Speck says, and you may be in the barracks eating nothing but grass for eight years to survive. But yes, you too can become a mod if you believe. So true. I actually don't think I've modded anyone since, since January, since I got back into the anti-MLM content. Um, because honestly, man, the, the people who are mods have been with me, like some of them since 2019. Real shit. Before I was even focusing on anti-MLM content. Like, they've been with me from time. So, you know, it's really deep. But it's, you know what's very deep? The fact that 88 people have clicked like, but there's 130 people watching. Thumbs up the king. So click like. All right. Here we go. Uh, I want to say this. I forgot to take my creatine yesterday. But I took it today. So it's all good. And I saw a guy at the gym today. I'm just going to say this to anybody who, who goes to the gym, okay? Whether you're doing it casually or you're doing it to like try to get to some level of, uh, you know, physique, competition, whatever it is you're doing. Let me just say this. Do not ego lift. Do not slap a bunch of weight on the machine or put heavy plates on the, on, on the bar on the barbell to try to like be cool, whether you're trying to do it for yourself or to other people, bro, it is so not worth it to be injured. I dislocated my shoulder back in December doing overhead shoulder press with free weights with uh, dumbbells and my one arm went too far back and I didn't drop the weight and it popped my shoulder out this way and I had to go to the fucking hospital and wear a sling and I couldn't even move my fingers for like two weeks in the left hand and it took months. It's still not even 100% right now. I saw a guy at the gym today, and I'm not going to describe him or name names, okay? Because 
you know, people watch my stream. I don't want to like be, I don't want to be judgmental, but I am judging what he was doing. I'm not judging him as a person. I'm sure he's a great guy, but I'm judging what he was doing. There was a guy at the gym who I saw him a week ago and I knew he was ego lifting because he was curling fucking 90 pound dumbbells. First of all, nobody curls 90 pound dumbbells. Like, let's be real. And he, you know how I knew he was bugging? Because he asked somebody else to spot him do, just standing up curling. In what universe? And his form was terrible. He was just swinging them up and bringing them back down. Like, it didn't, they didn't even count as reps. They were bullshit reps. Today, <laughs> today I'm sitting on the uh, leg extension machine. You know, it was leg day. I was sitting on the leg extension machine trying to do my slow controlled, you know, leg extensions, get them, get them quads built up, get them, you know, and bro, this guy goes on the other leg extension machine. I can see him. He puts the pin, he pulls the pin to like, to set the weight, puts it in the very bottom. So he maxes out the weight, like 250 pounds. So already you're, you're ego lifting because that level of strain on your knees, like you are going to fuck your knees up, okay? That's where the point of whatever center of gravity or whatever it's called is when you're doing leg extension. Like it's on your knees, not good. He puts the pin on the highest weight and then he goes and grabs a 25 pound plate from like, the, from like one of the bench presses. And he takes that and he takes the pin and he like puts the pin through the 25 pound plate, which is inserted on the other side on like the 250 pound stack. So he's got like 275 pounds. And again, it's just like, like leaning his whole body back, arching his back, pushing his like whole lower body forwards and like getting it up and then just bringing it back down. Terrible fucking reps. Terrible reps. And I was watching and I was like, bro, like, let me be fair. He is more jacked than me. So I'm not going to go up to him and say anything, but bro, dude, you know how I knew this, this guy was just like in the matrix because he had a notebook with him, which is fine. Some people like to log their workouts and he also had a calculator with him. What the fuck is the calculator for? Hmm. If I do 250 pounds with the uh, leg extensions at this many reps, I'll have lifted this much. What the fuck is you got like a calculator for in the gym? Carrying his calculator, his water bottle, his energy drink, and his notebook around to each fucking machine. Make it make sense. So he's doing these terrible leg extensions, and I wanted to say something to him just for, like, out of love because I don't want to see him get hurt. Oh, also, he had no headphones in, which it's like he was just listening to whatever, you know, the gym music was, some Maroon 5 bullshit that they'd be playing on the radio, whatever it was, right? And it's like, dog. You're, you're, lift, you're maxing out the machine and you don't even have music in? Like, you're just, you're just, you're trolling, bro. <laughs> you're trolling. You are literally trolling. You're just doing this so that somebody comes up to you and goes, oh, a big lift. <laughs> like, you don't even have headphones in, bro. So, he did some bullshit reps and then, like, got up, left, went to another machine, did the same shit. It's like, oh, my God, dude. He's going to injure himself. And I wanted to say something to him, which I've never been that guy. I've never said anything to somebody in the gym about like the gym because it's like, what the fuck? Just leave people alone. But I wanted to say something to this guy, even though I didn't, because he is more jacked than me. So I didn't want to go there and have him be like a douchebag and be like, oh, what do you, what do you know? I'm, I, I weigh 275. You don't. I just didn't want to risk it. But like in my mind, I was like, damn, bro, like purely out of love. Like I just want to say to this guy, like, dog. You know, this is not it. This is not it to be doing these bad reps just to get the weight up in the air and then bring it back down with no sort of form or control just so you could say you maxed out the machine. Like, bro, and mind you, no disrespect, but he wasn't even that big. He wasn't even that big to be doing all this. You're never going to, this guy would never convince me that he's like, maxing out the machines for good reason. You're just, you're trolling. So I feel bad because I know there is going to come a point where I just stop seeing him at the gym 
and then I don't see him for six months and it's because he got injured. Or I don't see him for three months and the next time I see him, he's on crutches because he fucked his shit up. That's, it's just going to happen if you're lifting like that. So anyways, point is, bro, don't compare yourself to other people, especially not in a gym setting. Compare yourself only to where you were yesterday and be safe. It is not worth it, bro. Getting sick, getting injured is so not worth it. By any means, you should avoid it. So, uh, yeah, man, I just, I feel bad. Bad Dog Sports. Bad Dog Sports knows what's good because he just, congratulations again, by the way, Bad Dog Sports. If you're not in my Discord, join the Discord. Link is in the description. Bad Dog Sports posted that he's placed uh, uh, in a bodybuilding competition. So that's amazing. And he says, I've worked out a long time. Anyone that ego lifts is made fun of by other guys in the gym. We all notice it. Yeah, bro. It's like, who are you trying to impress, bro? You know, he did. He does carry the gallon of water. Yep. Fuck. Marco, the type to walk up to people that they're and tell them they're doing their set wrong. No, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. Um, did I take any pics of anyone's water bottle? No. He wanted fast results, just like someone who gets attracted to MLM. Yeah, I like how we related it back to MLM. But no, I. Why the fuck you got a calculator in the gym, bro? Real shit. Specs also says Marco the type to sip his venti chai latte between sets. No, not today. Um, there comes a point when you kind of need to do things like that if you're training for strength. The 90-pound dumbbell curls with cheat form could be to expose the muscle to that weight. You'll never convince me that there was any justifiable reason for him to be going and lift and curling 90s, bro. Sorry. You're trolling. You're literally memeing the whole shit. Uh... But anyways, write this down. Don't ego lift. It is not on... Oh, yeah, it is on subscriber-only chat. Of course it's on subscriber-only chat. What the fuck? I'm going to have people in here. Oh, Marco, actually... You know. Avoid the gym. Got it, says Johnny. Yeah, there you go. All right. There Have I seen gray-haired men working out in jeans? There's one guy who always pulls up in cowboy boots, and I'm low-key jealous, but now I have an even better cowboy hat. There is one older, like much older gentleman who's in great shape for his age, but I swear, I, in my head, I call him Joe Biden because he looks just like Joe Biden, but if Joe Biden had red hair instead of white hair, literally looks like Joe Biden. All right. WFG guy is still in the gym. Jarek? Yeah, I've seen Jarek a couple times this week, actually. Did he say anything to me? Of course not. Every time these people see me, every time these people see me, crickets, grown ass men. Woo yeah. All right. By the way, my Starbucks cheat code is venti iced chai tea latte with however many pumps you want of brown sugar syrup Add vanilla cold foam and get light ice. Also, I have it made with oat milk. Now, is there 1,200 grams of sugar in that? Probably yes, which is why I, don't, I try not to drink it often. And you know how I've been limiting my Starbucks consumption as of recent is I have a new rule that if I, if I go to Starbucks, I have to pay for the person behind me in the drive-thru. So because of this, I mean, Starbucks is already expensive. Streamlabs link in the chat. Starbucks is already expensive. So by adding this caveat of me having to pay for the person behind me, I'm less likely to give in to my temptation to go to Starbucks when I feel it because it's like, okay, now it's going to be really expensive. So that's, that's my Starbucks drink. And, you know, not good for you. Not good for you. Christian says, there was an ego lifter in my college gym. Literally after every set, he flexed in the mirror and looked at everyone to see if they were looking at him. Poor guy. Poor guy. <clears throat> Even Steven says, I work out so I can throw my husband around. Insane. <laughs> uh, imagine when the MLM guy at your gym sees you absolutely shredded off the creatine. Oh, my God. Dude, so not to suck my own dick here, but I started working out... Uh, Three years ago, but let's, let's say I've really been putting in two years because there was COVID, the gym shut down, the gym reopened again, gym shut down again, I lost all my gains again, 
then I got injured, then I got sick, then I got, you know, just like never consistent. So consistently, really one year, but working out and at least doing it a couple times a week, two years. I was 145 pounds. I'm now 170 pounds. I don't, I don't smoke cigarettes. I don't smoke weed. I don't do any drugs. I don't drink alcohol. Um, I was vegetarian, but when I was vegetarian, I was actually like the worst shape I've ever been because without eating protein, like animal protein, I was just fucking eating carbs. So sure, I was vegetarian, but I was so bloated. Like I was just eating spaghetti and shit because if you're not eating protein, the only thing that really makes you feel full is like carbs. So bread, spaghetti, oh my God, terrible. So I couldn't have sucked in my stomach if I wanted to during that time. But anyways, 145 to 170, pretty good, pretty good. I'm a young man, I'm 27. So 170 pounds from 145, not bad, 25 pounds. But I'm telling you, bro, these next few months, knock on wood, I don't get injured, I don't get sick, I just stay consistent. These next few months, bro, when this creatine really saturates, don't be surprised if I'm 180. Don't be surprised if I start posting uh, shirtless before and after pics in the Discord. Don't. <laughs> Don't. Hey, let's, br let's bring in a new segment. Live from Goon Headquarters in scenic Edmonton, Alberta, it's time for Goon News. Marco. With your host, Marco. Always Marco. Marco. You give us five minutes, we'll give you the Goon. Welcome. To another edition of Goon News. On tonight's story, we have a breaking new report from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. This comes from a local gym. It says that YouTube anti-MLM creator and cult leader slash influencer, Always Marco, has foretold and warned that he may be posting shirtless progress photos of his gym routine, gym progress gains in his Discord server in the coming months. Stay tuned for updates on this story. So that's all I gotta. That's all I gotta. That's all I gotta say. Um, okay, let's see if Scott and Peter are done. There was also another thing I was gonna talk about. But I forget. Dude, throughout 2022, when I would stream, I wasn't talking about MLMs. I would just like talk about my life, like shit like that gym story, you know, personal things that happened in my life, uh, dating experiences, et cetera, et cetera. And now we're just straight business, baby. Straight business. And now you look at the Streamlabs link in the chat. You look at the Patreon. You look at the YouTube memberships. You look at the merch, and se merch sales and you get it. So join the Discord and yeah, um, I should talk about more dating. Nah, I shouldn't actually. Let me chill. Let me chill. Uh, I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin and I am a man of God and I haven't ever even spoken to a woman. Okay, let's see. Um, there is a way to eat protein without eating meat, but I sucked at it. About to pull up ripped. Yeah. Post the shirtless pic on YouTube for Scott and Peter to drool over. Literally, literally. Oh, bad dog. If I ever come to New York, bro, trust me, we're getting a workout in together. I'm going to snort creatine off bad dog sports bicep. Trust me. Trust me. Um, Marco, do you need a graphics package? Sure. Imagine me saying no. Imagine me saying that there's 109 people that have liked this, but 160 people watching. You wouldn't believe me. Thumbs up the team. He's for the streets. What? Why? All right. I'm reading your guys' comments. Perfect news segment. You like that? You like good news? All right. <laughs> um, I got the flu once and it wrecked my energy for six months. Yep. Straight up. Not worth it. Um, you know what? I, I'll, I'll tell you this. The reason I changed my tune on being vegetarian and nobody can eat my ass over this because I was vegetarian for five years. 
And the only exception that didn't make me completely vegan was I ate cheese occasionally still. I couldn't give up cheese. So with the exception of cheese, I was completely vegan for five years. No eggs, no, I, no dairy, no nothing. And I gave it a fair shot. Five years, that's a long, I've only, I'm only 27. That's like a quarter of my life almost. It is a quarter of my life because the first two years of my life, it's like, are you even eating fucking solid food when you're one and two? So the reason I changed my mind is because ultimately, here's this. There's many layers to it, but I'll try to keep it concise. First of all, Impossible Burgers, Beyond Meat Burgers, all that shit, what's actually in it? Listen, even if you don't know about like nutrition and shit, you know in your heart what's healthy and what's not. Is Coca-Cola healthy? You know it's not. It's black liquid. What plant did Coca-Cola come from? Can you pronounce the ingredients? Did it come from the ground? Did it grow on a vine? Was it once a living thing? These are simple questions you can ask yourself when trying to figure out if something is healthy or not. You know chips that came in a cellophane package are not healthy. You know carrots are healthy. Simple. Is it green? You know what I mean? You know? Does it go bad? Okay. Just fundamentals. I have never tracked any calories or no shit like that on an app. Um, look, just use common sense. You know if it's healthy. You know that uh, cake is not salad. Okay? So um, that was part one of it. Part two of it is chickens. I stopped having empathy for chickens. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm really, I'm really maybe going to marginalize some people. I stopped having empathy for chickens. Is there... Do I have a problem with, like, cruelty and animal? Of course I do. It's terrible. You've seen some of those documentaries, the way they treat the animals? Absolutely horrible. But if you get your meat from, like, an ethically sourced, high-quality place, grocery store, butcher, whatever, then you can feel good knowing that you're not contributing to that. But when it comes to just the overall population of chicken, fuck chickens! Fuck the chickens. There are so many chickens in the world. They're like bugs. They're like ants. It, it, just the sheer scale of them. They're not pets. You don't give a fuck. If you swat a mosquito, do you give a fuck? No. So now I look at it like this. Instead of me going, oh, you know what? I'm going to spare all the chickens and cows and whatever so that they can live and be slaughtered any fucking ways. And I'm going to just get fat and eat, eat carbs and be unhealthy and bloated. Now, you know how I look at it? I've shifted my perspective. Now, I owe a debt of gratitude to every chicken or cow that I eat because they died for me. So I need to make sure that I do good for the world and do good for the universe and, and am a good person and make sure I don't squander their uh, meat by you know, eating unhealthy. I need to make sure I go to the gym and honor the memory of those chickens. Those chickens, their destiny, their destiny was to die, to provide my body with nutrients because I am the greater life form. I am a human and they are a little bug. They are a little chicken. They're stupid little, you know, nothing's going on. Me, I'm fighting the forces of evil. So those chickens should, are honored to die for my, to sacrifice their lives in the line of duty for me and what I'm trying to do. For real. So... I have great respect for animals and great uh, uh, gratitude towards the animals that I eat because I feel like, you know what? This cow died and I'm the beneficiary of so many thousands of years of human technological and evolutionary advancements that I don't even, I didn't even have to go out and hunt and kill this chicken or this cow. I just went to the grocery store and bought it. I'm so grateful for that. I need to respect this animal by making sure that I, it's already dead. I need to respect this animal by making sure that I use the nutrients that its meat is providing me and the protein. I need to make sure I'm using it for good, going to the gym and being a you know, good, good person in society. That's how I feel now. So uh, I have changed my, uh, my perspective on being vegan, uh, being vegetarian. And you know what? Don't say I'm, I'm not anti-vegan. I absolutely stand, stand by uh, people who are vegan. If your reasoning for doing it is because of your health, I respect it. 
If it's for the environmental preservation, I respect it. If it's for uh, not wanting to contribute to animal suffering, I absolutely respect it. Those were the reasons that got me into it. But I'm at a point in my life where I realize it's probably more important for me to bulk up and become James Bond and be strong and be able to fight the forces of evil that are actually hurting human beings than to uh, be a pacifist in favor of chickens and cows and suffer, uh, you know, losing, like, like suffer looking good and being strong because of it. I, I've selfishly chosen to put me above the chickens. Sorry. So, uh, yeah. I, I'm sure I, I'm sure I'm getting, I'm sure I'm getting torn apart for this in the chat. But let me see. Um, Morgan says, a lot, to be fair, a lot of meat substitute brands add random vitamins and stuff in them. But yeah, as a vegetarian, I definitely only eat carbs. See, there you go. Um, which plant does Starbucks grow on, huh? Specs. I'm about to ban, ban specs and take away his ranch. Um, cake is not salad. Write this down. All right, let me see what y'all are saying. Chickens have been canceled. There's as many chickens on this earth as humans. But there's more. There's way more chickens than there is humans. Chicken to human ratio. Watch this. Let's see. This is what pops up on Google. What is the chicken to human ratio? In 2020, there were over 33 billion chickens and only 7 billion humans. That's like five, four, five chickens, almost five chickens per human, bro. So literally fuck chickens. Thanks for your advice today. Keep ah. it, man. <laughs> Thank you, Ethan. Really appreciate that, dog. Thank you, bro. Um, Marco, he would the chicken hate. LOL. Chicken, ground turkey, egg whites. Yeah, yeah. Ali Cat says, as someone who raised chickens, he's right. Thank you. Um, the only reason there are so many chickens is because they're used for meat and eggs, says Morgan. True. So what am I doing? I'm going to not eat the eggs? Fuck those eggs. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Um. That Peter Mingles in the chat is not the real Peter Mingles, by the way, y'all. Um, I know this has had nothing to do with MLM so far, but I'm sorry. I'm just talking about my life. I didn't stream last night, so I got some shit to get out of my chest. Um, thank you, chickens, for your service. Thank you, Shades of Glow. So true. Um, I'm reading you guys' comments because I'm actually curious to see what y'all think about chicken. Chickens died from my triceps. For real! How many fucking subscribers did the chickens have? Zero? Fuck them then. I, I'm, I'm out here trying to save human beings' lives. Sorry, but if me being big and strong and making anti-MLM content is going to help people preserve their relationships with their relatives and friends who have been brainwashed or who might be brainwashed by joining an MLM, MLM, but then they watch my video about it and they decide, no, I'm not going to do that. And they save countless thousands and millions of dollars and their friendships and relationships remain intact. I think we would all agree chickens uh, do not take precedent in that situation. So fuck chicken. Um, let's see. Scott and Peter, chickens with a radio show. So true. Um, Peter can't resist Marco Muka buff. Hilarious. This is a foul conversation, says Devin. But I'm tss. Excellent take. Amazing. Marco starts eating meat. Aggression factor increases respect. Oh, dude, I was so lethargic. And like, I, I, I never got my testosterone levels tested when I was vegetarian. But I just know. I just know it wasn't. I just know it wasn't good. These days, bro, my testosterone, before I go to the gym, I just be having little moments without even taking pre-workout. I just have little moment, little twinges of anger, not even like in a toxic way. Like I'm not even angry about anything. I just have little moments where I'm like, <sighs> you know what I mean? Like I need to go harder. You see it. He's insane. Eat Marco before chickens. Giselle, thank you, Giselle. She says, as a vegetarian, I can say some people are healthier eating animal protein. So true. So true. Ch drop a one in the chat if chickens are stupid little bugs. <laughs> All right. 
Um, I'm reading you guys' comments. Also, wow, you're a bacon of hope. Wow, with the puns. Chilling on, chilling on pork, by the way. Pigs eat their own poop. Fuck them. Dude, if five chickens recruited five chickens recruited five chickens, the five by five business model might actually work because there are so many chickens that you could, you could actually go quite a high number of cycles in your, ML, in your chicken MLM before you ran out of chickens to recruit. Humans, there's only 7 billion. Chickens, 33 billion? Hello. They're, they're going to the moon with that. Um, yeah. Jimkin Bjorger, yes, so true. Mariano, glad you recognized what was going on at that event. Okay. I'm just, you know. All right, let me get through these comments here. Beyond says, chickens can be pleasant. They are pretty sophisticated and intelligent social animals. Oh, yeah? Invite one to live with you in your bedroom then. We just do nothing... We just do nothing to make them happy and never let them be doofy birds. Well, they're stupid. Tell, say, tell me that when a chicken poops in your bed. How about that? All right. All right, keep going. Let's see. Um, Marco pushing big chicken propaganda. Grass is green on the other side to keep you in the MLM. If they say, then say, if not this, then what? So true. Bro, let me just make this clear. MLM motherfuckers have been saying since the dawn of human time. Oh, the compute, the machines are going to take over. Oh, the economy's so bad. The government doesn't love you. Uh, you know, what else? The, uh, your, job, your job isn't secure. If it's not this, then what are you going to do? They've been saying that since the beginning of time. Don't buy it. All right, let's continue. Ah, uh, beyond. Sorry, yes, the kidney stone. Fuck. Hope hope that hope that passes with no problem. I only go to Starbucks when they run a big promotion. I pay for my Starbucks. So true. All right. Don't get him started on beer. Oh my god, beer! I will fucking lose my mind. Alcohol, alcohol in general, LOL, all the people, <laughs> I'm pissing off so many people. Bro, I, when I was vegetarian, one of the girls, I'll be honest, it was girls who got me to be vegetarian. I, would, I, I went on a date with one girl. She was vegan. I was like 21 years old. She had very soft skin. She was like, yeah, I'm vegan. That's why my skin is so soft. And like, I don't know, I was just attracted to her at the time. So I was like, oh, okay. She comes to my house. We're watching Netflix. Doo -doo -doo. She's like, yeah, let's watch this documentary. The, this bitch was low-key fucking brainwashing me, bro. Oh, yeah, let's just watch the documentary. She's already seen it. Why do you want me to watch it? So I can be like you. So And it worked. And then it was about like uh, how it's so bad for the environment. I was like, oh, some good points were made, but I'm not going to go vegetarian. Then a few months later, maybe I saw a different girl. She's like, oh, yeah, let's watch this documentary. And this is – I swear there must have been – they must have had a network – of girls communicating with each other to conspire against me to turn me vegan. Because the next girl was like, oh, yeah, let's watch this one about animal cruelty. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, that one was about the environment. This one about the animals. Like, I might have to go vegetarian. And then I watch another one, and it's about uh, how it's bad for your health. And I'm like, oh, okay. So beef is a carcinogen. So beef gives you cancer. Okay, so now I have to be vegetarian. And I was vegetarian for five years. I, yeah, I simped, I got simped into being vegetarian. Insane. So, uh, I don't even know where the fuck I was going with this. But, I might have to, I literally don't know where I was going with this. It's about, it's like, oh yeah, let's watch this. Oh, like, I don't know, I was just attracted to her. Went on a date with one girl. I'm watching it vegan. back. I was like 21 years old. I was vegetarian. One I can lose my mind. Alcohol, alcohol? Oh, this is what I was going to say. Yes, I remembered. These women were t teaching me about being vegan. All these bitches like did coke and shit. How are you going to talk to me about how it's healthy and uh, better for the environment and better, better for the animals uh, to be vegan, but you guys still drink alcohol and do drugs and shit? 
I knew one girl, she was like, yeah, I did Coke. I'm like, aren't you vegan? She's like, yeah, but whatever, it's Coke, it's not food. I'm like, yeah, but what about eth the ethics of the whole thing? The, the, people, the farmers with the coca plants in Mexico who are making you know, pennies and basically living in, in slavery to the drug cartels. And then like, that can't be good for the environment. That can't be good for, the, uh, for your health. You know what I mean? That can't be good for the people who are working in that. So where, where... So y'all tricked me. So y'all tricked me. <laughs> so y'all was doing coke and y'all was doing coke, but still doing, uh, being vegan and talking about how steak disgusted you. I remember one girl, bro. On Snapchat, I Snapchat. This is when I was like 21. I Snapchatted her a picture. This is one of the vegan girls, by the way. I, I, I wasn't even thinking about it. I just Snapchatted her and like a bunch of other friends on my Snapchat a picture of like some burger. I had made homemade burgers and it was real meat at the time. I wasn't vegetarian. She sent me this thing back. She's like, hey, I would really appreciate it if you don't send me pictures of meat because you know I'm vegan and da, da, da. And I'm like, you do coke. Anywho. What up, Johnny Azul? So, but that was in my simp days. I don't simp anymore. I realized that that is such a fucking L. Simping, I'm glad, you know what? <sighs> Part of me regrets the time, the amount of time in my life that I spent simping because it was a long time. But you only simp, if you, if, if, if you understood your potential, you would never simp. If you understood what your potential was and you really loved yourself and you went to therapy and you did all the things you needed to do to set yourself up on the path to like self-improve, you would never simp. You would never simp. But also I'm grateful for that time because I can look back on it as like what not to do and I'm still young. Some people simp their whole life. Some people simp and then because they're such simps, they end up marrying the girl that they didn't really love just because they were simping and they were scared to like lose the relationship or whatever, or that's where they were deriving their purpose from. And then they end up getting married and then they get divorced years later. And it's like, now they're much older and they realize, oh, I, I actually, what do I have? I have no game. I'm not fit. I don't have any money. I'm fucking, I'm a loser. So I'm grateful for, but boy, did I simp for a long time. Honestly, disgusting. But what can you do? I'm a man of God now. You want to hear what I have to say about beer? It's just bad for you, man. Beer is such an L. Beer is such an L. What's the shit? Beer, one pint of beer equals how much bread? This will make you sick. A pint of beer is equivalent to seven slices of bread. What you were about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case. Seven slices of beer, of bread, one beer. Hey, that's fucking bad for you. <laughs> it's so bad for you. Goodness gracious. So, uh, you know, Alcohol is just such an L overall. Anytime you ever talk to somebody who went out drinking the night before, they never have some good shit to say. Rarely. Oh, yeah, I went down there and... Dude, also, what a fucking racket. The Matrix. You're gonna... Let's say, let's say you, you're gonna drink so you don't drive because you're responsible. So you Uber down to the bar. Uber to the bar. Who's this? Devin. Get away from my WFG water bottle or I'll tattle. No kidding. Thank you, Devin. Appreciate you. Inception. You, you Uber down to the bar. You go stand in line. Boo, Matrix. You go stand in line. You pay cover. There's money. You pay for coat check. There's money. Now, you're not even in like any VIP shit. You're just a, a, a pleb. You're walking around in the bar. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'll buy a beer, please. Oh, it's fucking... I don't even know how much beer is. What is a beer? I feel like Bill Gates on... Uh, there's an episode of Ellen where Bill Gates is on Ellen and she's doing like this Price is Right sort of thing with him where he's trying to... She's like, guess the price of like a pack of ramen noodles. And he's like, $5? Like, 
Like he's so out of touch. Honestly, that's goals. My goal in life is to be so rich that I'm just completely out of touch with like how much things cost. She asks Bill Gates, how much is this pack of Oreos you think? He's like, $20? <laughs> he has no idea. So anywho, you go into the bar, you're in, you're in there. Hey, bartender, can I have a beer? Okay, it's eight. You know, they have some weird numbers so that they give you change and you just put in the tip thing. It's $8.37, making it up, making it up. Okay, cool. Go to some girl. Hey, can I buy you a beer? You're just racking up the costs all night. Lame. And then it's like, oh, uh, I'm going to Uber back home. Like the amount of fucking money. Insanity. Oh, yeah, I was in an Uber with the, I met a girl at the bar, and then I, we were going back to my place, but she threw up in the Uber, so the Uber charged me $200 cleaning fee, and then I went back home, and then. Y'all need Jesus, man. What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, yeah, you were at the bar, you were partying last night? What are you celebrating? What are you celebrating? Being a fucking loser. <laughs> I remember one of my friends told me, uh, I told him he was being a loser, okay? I don't know if girls talk to each other this way, but like with your boys, if you're actually really close, you can say shit like this. And I would want my friends to say this to me too. I said to my boy, I was like, dude, you're a fucking loser. Like, I I'm gonna be honest. Like, you don't go to the gym. You, have, you, you play video games. Like, you're a grown-ass man still playing video games like for an exceptional amount of time. Playing video games for fun, no, no biggie. Let me clarify. All he did fucking play video games. I was like, bro, you are a loser. Wow, A. Louise Mack, thank you. Ten members, that's insane. Uh, who got the memberships? Joey K, Jacob, Chemist, Morgan, Cariana, Jenny Rose, uh, Vince Pecora, Eliza, oh, sorry, Straw Babies, No One of Significance, Devin Kelly, woo, and Natalie Gale, woo, let's go, let's go. Uh, so anyways... Yeah, Marco was the one dealing it. So funny. Who said that? Alley Cat. So funny. Okay. Um, I told my friend he's being a loser. And you know what he said to me? I was like, bro, you're not going to the gym. On Friday night, you went to the fucking hockey game and drank beer. On Saturday night, you linked up with your boys and you had like a gaming night and you drank beer and smoked weed. And now it's Sunday and you want to take the day off because you have work tomorrow. You're a fucking loser. And he was like, okay, Marco, I guess I'll never have fun then. And honestly, I stopped being, I, st I wouldn't say I stopped being his friend, but I haven't like talked to him really since. And I don't want to go into a whole thing about mindset because I'll start, I'll start sounding like, I'll start sounding like this, like I'm promoting my multi-level marketing opportunity. And I promise you, I guarantee you I'm not. But honestly, dude, with that type of approach to life, Okay, I guess I'll never have fun. It's like, yeah, but bro, there's seven days in a week. Three days of this week you've been having fun. Like, let's have some moderation, you know? His dopamine receptors are just fucking fried. All right. Well, you are the Coke dealer, so true. Um, do I miss the goon streams? I still have fun with y'all, as long as you're thumbs up in the stream. All right. <laughs> he, you do coke, bullseye, hilarious. Um, we have a locked away Marco character. I wonder if we can unlock him. Yes, yeah, Simp Marco, he's never coming back. He's never coming back, trust me. Never like someone's pick on IG. That's another thing. Thank you for reminding me of that, Specs. No disrespect to any girl out there. I don't like girls' pictures on Instagram. It's just a rule that I have. I do not like girls' pictures on Instagram. I don't even care if we were dating. I do not like girls' pictures on Instagram. For what? <laughs> Ooh, so sexy. You're a fucking loser. You are a fucking loser, bro. Liking girls' pictures. Did you fuck her? No? Shut the fuck up then. What are you still liking her pictures for? Trust me. Hey, dudes, don't be delusional. Think of a girl in your mind who's a 10. You got it? Now ask yourself, am I sleeping with her? Am I dating her? No? Okay, so that means you're not a 10. 
That means there's more work to do. So get, why are you liking her picture? Leave it alone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, well, I just thought so that she knows. Dude, she knows. She knows already. You already liked one. You already, you already follow each other. You already met her at that thing through your mutual friend. And she already got to look at you and knew within two seconds whether she was going to message you or not. Has she messaged you? No. So did you really think that liking her picture was going to send the signal into the universe that made her go, bzz, bzz, oh, I should message this guy and we should have sex. What are you doing? Get the fuck off of that. I don't know. I'm just passionate about that. It makes, I never used to think it was a big deal, but it just makes, the more you think about liking girls' pictures on Instagram, the less sense it makes. There is no situation where I would ever see that as being like a reasonable thing to do. There's just no point. Well, I'm just supporting. No, the fuck you're not. Shut up. All right. Sorry. <laughs> this is just me giving my manifesto of like uh, how to live life. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm, ca I'm, I'm catching up on your comments. I'm at the part where y'all are talking about seven slices of bread is one beer. Okay. Ten bucks for a beer? Is that really how much it is? No way. Ten dollars for one drink? Loser shit. Joey K says, there's the problem. You're going to clubs from 2002 music videos that have lines, coat check, and cover charge. Is that not a thing anymore? Goes to show you how much I know about the club. Um. <laughs> how much could a banana cost? Ten dollars? <laughs> Overall message says NPAS. If you're a vegetarian drinker here, just know you suck. Nah, nah, nah. I'm playing. No judgment. No judgment. No judgment. Um, thank you again, A. Louise Mack, for the gifted memberships. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm way too intense with it. When I start talking about shit that I actually like believe in and I'm passionate about, I'm way too intense with it. All right. We're going we're gonna to get into Scott and Peter and just have a silly goose time here. All right. So haram. Don't come for my weed. A bug just flew into my window and died. All right. All right, let me catch up. I love alpacas, says you sound pretty judgmental. Hey, I love alpacas. Use your real picture and real first and last name before you come for me. How about that? All right. Jake says life is about fun. Hedonism is a black hole, my friend. Let me know in 10 years, after 10 years of just having fun every single day. And nothing and doing nothing but let me know how you feel. Spec says I miss Gabby. I used to stream a lot with my cousin Gabby. I actually talked to Gabby for like two and a half hours on the phone today. We we a little catching up was due, so I want Simp Marco. You'll never get him. Joey K, yeah, maybe the billion and one th the billion and one billion and first time of me liking girls' picture will actually work. Yeah. Girls post pics for girls, says Giselle. Giselle said it, not me. What about guys? Girls, you go ahead and make that first move like a guy's pick. Y'all don't stop. Y'all better not stop liking my pics. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and also, dudes, you should like your guy friend's pictures. Because think about how rarely guys get complimented. Just like your boy's pic, bro. It literally is nothing. Do it. But stop liking girls' pictures. Marco likes my pictures. Me. So sus. <laughs> and I'm not talking about being an incel. Be, have relationships, of course. Don't be a loser. Follow girls. Sure. Watch stories. Sure. But like liking pictures, bro. Replying heart eye emojis to like multiple. Like, if you re Listen, if you slide into a girl's DM one time, if you react with the heart eyes or the fire emoji one time, and that doesn't, within a week, lead to you guys meeting face-to-face, -face. never do it again. Never do it again. Do it, and if it doesn't, within one week, lead to you guys meeting face-to-face -face and going on a date or something equivalent, look in the mirror very close. Go like this. Look in the mirror and look in your own eyes and say, you're not that guy, pal. Because you're not that guy yet. You are not that guy. Go become that guy, and then a year from now, when all you've been doing is fucking uh, working out and making money, now after one year, you can slide in again and see what happens. But, but honestly, <clears throat> at that point, 
If you've been doing what you're supposed to, you won't even need to. She'll have hollered at you. Girls are very intelligent creatures. They have, I, I truly believe that there is like another plane of existence that only women have access to because they have like invisible antennas inside their brain. They have like a sixth sense where they can feel if you are a waste man. They can feel, they can sense the sauce. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like that phenomenon where like as soon as you get a girlfriend, other girls start hollering at you, like that type of shit. It's just like in the, in the cosmos, okay? I don't know how to explain it, but if you are doing what you're supposed to do, women can like smell it. I don't know how to explain it. I have no backing for this, no evidence. Just trust me, okay? Girls can sense, whether they know specifically or not, they can sense whether, if last night you were jerking off and eating Doritos till 3 a.m., they, they know. They might know, not know specifically that that's what you were doing, but they know something is off. Trust me. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. The incel manifesto, hilarious. Um, okay. Shades of glow. Uh, this is not incel manifesto. All right. The spec says, y'all add me on IG. Let's like for like. Hilarious. <laughs> All right. Specs, spec simping in my chat for the likes. I love it. Does $10 beer come with a hit off a crack pipe? I am too based tonight. All right. Re not red. This is not red pill. This is just. This is not that red pill alpha male shit. This is just common sense, logical advice. This is good. This is healthy advice. Kirsten says you sound bitter. I, I'm not bitter, Kirsten. I have the, the best relationships and the best upward trajectory in my life that I've ever had. I'm not bitter. If anything, I'm just passionate because I know that somebody watching this or somebody who will watch this on the replay is me three years ago. And I wish I had somebody grab me by the ears and tell me, stop liking girls' pictures. I really do. All right, let's see. From incel to pimp, no, no, no. Okay, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Antennas are attractable. No one slides into my DMs. My antennas agree. When we're together, we have antenna fights. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. I really feel like men, men need... Men need to lower their delusion. And all the ladies who are saying Marco Tate or incel, whatever, I'm doing, I'm doing this for y'all. I'm doing you a favor. You want greasy, dusty, crusty, musty dudes sliding into your DM and like expecting shit of you? Like, isn't that fucking insulting? Isn't it insulting when someone who you think is like hideous slides in on you and you look at them and you're like, wait, does this person actually think that they could get with me? Does that mean I'm ugly? Like, isn't it fucking insulting? I'm saying this for you. I'm saying this so that uh, dudes check their fucking delusion and go, you know, make something of themselves before, you know, trying to feel like, uh, or, or like, before thinking that the world owes them some shit or that women owe them some shit. It's, it's terrible. All right. Here we go. I'm not liking pictures, sweet goth, no. Jimmy Moon says, I had a guy reply, quote, I'd put a ring on it for like two years on my pictures on Instagram. Scared the hell out of me deep down. Yeah, bro, like that is a dude who's sitting at home like typing that. What the fuck? Cringe. Cringe. All right. Cass says we're complimenting you. Okay, I, maybe I misread it. Some, some of the, sometimes tone gets lost through the written word. I have a folder of all the dudes who paid for Tinder super likes on me. Damn. Don't like girls' pics. Did I miss something? You missed nothing. That's the whole message. Your girl can see who you like, which leads to more problems. Oh, my God. Dude, let's say you end up getting a girlfriend. Maybe it was one of these girls whose pictures you were liking. Maybe it wasn't. That girl is then going to go look at every girl you follow. Just believe me. She's going to. She's going to go look at the profile of every girl you follow. 
and then go and see that you liked all that other girl's pictures. You think there is no, there is no end game where you liking girls' pictures brings you anything positive. I, I promise you. I promise you. Listen to yourself. Listen to how you sound saying that uh, or implying that like liking a girl's picture is going to get you somewhere. Well, I would have slept with her, but I wasn't liking her pictures. Really? Wake up. Good morning, beautiful with the rose. Ah! Jesus. All right, let's watch. Let's listen to Building Fortunes Radio. Fine, if you're not going to like any pictures, have fun getting killed by the ghost that's going to be under your bed, under your bed in seven days because you didn't like and share, right? Remember when boomers on Facebook were posting a couple years ago, like they were all sharing that chain mail infographic that was like, Facebook does not have the right to use my images without my permission. Facebook does not have the right to sell my data. Remember when boomers <laughs> were all sharing that on Facebook? <laughs> like, bro, you already... When you signed up for Facebook, you gave Facebook permission to like sell your data. They were doing it anyways. You're that you sharing that literally did nothing. <laughs> ah, fuck. That was so funny. Okay. All right. Building relationships radio. I can't wait to hear uh, Scott and Peter comment on this. Yep. That was a priceless era, yeah. Okay, all right, let's listen. Let's, let's see if on this iHeartRadio link, the newest episode of BFR has popped up. Yes, it is. Wow, okay, I'm using this site from now on. So guys, get your BFR bingo ready. Let's pull it up here. This is made by Beyond. Shout out to Beyond in the chat. You can follow along. Every, every time you open this up, we'll, each of us will have a different uh, variation of these. So there's many uh, different potential options uh, options that could populate any of these 25 boxes. So you might get a bingo before me, but if you have, if you're on a computer, you want to open another tab or you have another device that you want to open this on, check it out. The link to it is in the, uh, discord in the losing fortunes radio chat. You can find it there. Uh, if you just want to type it, it's Marco dash, let me see, pull it up. Marco dash bingo dot glitch dot me. So that's if you want to check it out. All righty. <laughs> Let's see who's too ashamed to post a picture of Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. 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 You know. Okay. Let's listen to Building Fortunes Radio. Scott Johnson and Peter Mingles and MLM guest. I wonder who the guest is. Roast anti MLM troll. Here we go. Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. Make sure you check us out at buildingfortunesradio.com. Along with our marketing partners, we're here to help our PM Marketing Network Lead customers build their businesses and make the world a better place. At Building Fortunes, we know how much your business means to you and the people important to you. So spread the word, tell a friend. Join our newsletter and go make a difference in your world. Now on to our show with your host, Peter Mingles. Hello, everyone. Peter Mingles here. You're listening to us on Building Fortunes Radio. It's www.buildingfortunesradio.com. We know we have a whole bunch of new listeners because we do, and it has nothing to do with our anti-MLM troll guy. He thinks he's the guy that actually makes us a whole bunch of people, but we have a whole bunch of new listeners all the time. And one of the things that we did is um, I started this radio show with Scott Johnson, actually, uh, several years ago. I think it was I – Scott, I think Scott tells me it was Labor Day that he made the phone call, and I think it was the year 2015, so you can kind of do the math if you need a calculator. But the reality is we've been doing this radio show for a super-duper long time with Scott Johnson. Actually, this is Scott Johnson's radio show. And the way that things got started – is I was um, having a radio show with a gentleman named Roger Van Vlissingen. And for some of those people that are unfamiliar with Building Fortress Radio, um, I wanted this to be a platform so we could talk about 
stuff regarding the home-based business industry, specifically MLM, because many times and people, some people with simple brains have a hard time wrapping their mind around this. But when MLM is done right, I'm pro-MLM. And when MLM is done wrong, I'm anti-MLM. So, you know, you're pro when things when, when things are done right. You give people encouragement. When things are done wrong, you hopefully they'll change it around. And in both, many industries, um, things are done right and done wrong. And by the way, if you hear some barking. I'm, if you hear some barking. Barking in the background, that's my son's dog. They're kind of rallying the guys up. But the reality is, is that the... Thumbs up the stream, y'all. Let me see what y'all saying in the chat. We started this in 8 BC. Sounds like it. Bingo link, please. It's in the dis It's in the Discord. All right, let's see. <laughs> you guys are so fucking funny. Oh, it's easier to put a link in the description. You're right. I should do that. Why don't I? Why didn't I just? Why didn't I just share the link in the chat? LOL. Okay, it's in the chat. Click it now. All right. <clears throat> um, radio shows that we started doing had some pro stuff and some anti stuff, and I asked Roger Van Vlissingen to be on a radio show because he's just about as anti MLM as you can get but intellectually anti-MLM. I mean, the guy brings really good arguments. So I said, you know, I really want to talk to you about some of these things. And he brought back up a gentleman named E. Robert Smith. And E. Robert Smith and them, we did, I think we did two radio shows. You'll be able to find them. But Scott Johnson called me up after the first one and says, you know, I listened to the radio show, but there's a lot of things that people are missing. And I said, what's that, Scott? And he said, the tool scam associated with MLM. And I yep. didn't know if what Scott was going to reference is the same thing that I was thinking, because I sponsored myself in using the proper verbs with Amway three separate times. And I quit <laughs> three separate times. All around player maker says, fam, we are your only fans to, to Peter and Scott. Yeah. I mean, would you even say fans? <laughs> Listeners? Times. Not because of the seemingly overpriced products, not because of the maybe the perceptions of being a If you hear barking, that's my son. Hilarious, Damien. Not because of any of those things. Not even because of the crappy compensation. I oh, quit sorry, bad dog. all bad. they wanted me to do was recruit people into their hey, thing. And in essence... <laughs> Welcome to buying Coke from Marco Radio. You guys, your comments always make me want to stop because they're so fucking funny. Welcome to Building Fortunes Radio. I'm Peter. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth and their darkness over the void. <laughs> Hilarious. Do they ever talk about what they say in the title? Oh, I'm sure they will. Sell them tools. So I was like, I don't get commissions on selling tools. Why in the world? I mean, what do you think? We're all schmucks that we're going to be just yes. like using our influence to be able to bring people to your <laughs> systems. And Pat says, I could literally recite this entire intro off the top of my head by now. We should do that in a Discord voice chat one night. We should, do, we should go into Discord voice chat after stream one night. And uh, do a little BFR role play where you guys can play, where we can we can test NPAS on that and let him. I'll play the BFR music and he can do the. Hey everybody, it's Peter Mingles here. <laughs> I fired and hired myself. What up, Scott Johnson in the chat? This business, I didn't call it a tool scam. I call it like a system scam. And I said I'm not. You know, I I have no. And one last time, sell, sell, the little thumbs up the fucking stream. 191 watching, only 145 likes. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Thumbs up the team. All right, let's keep going. No problem with recruiting. That's never going to be an issue for me. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to worry about, like, can I really make this thing work? And we'll figure out what you guys are doing with this tool thing a little bit later on. So I quit three times because I finally found the third time around. I made the guy pull back the curtain, and he showed me the math behind the tool scam. And I said, that's great math. And you know what? I could probably be on stage because I'm on stage now at the company I'm with. I could probably sell stuff, you know, because I sell stuff right now. But the reality is, is that you're lying to people by deception. You're giving them the opinion that they're going to have your lifestyle, but they never will based on the comp plan unless they get involved in your systems business. So I wasn't sure Scott was talking about the same thing I was thinking. So I asked him if he had a website, and he said, I sure do. It's called Stop the Amway, Amway Tool Scam. Scam. And that's when I knew that he was talking about the same thing that I was talking about or thinking about. So we started doing this radio show. And I said, Scott, you know, I don't know how much we're going to be able to talk about tools. You know, we could bring that up. But, you know, that. I don't know how much we're going to be able to talk about tools 10 years later. Let me fast forward. Let me put on 1.25 uh, speed. Anything is going to get old over time. 
So we started then doing a whole bunch of other radio shows about the industry. I did not know that Scott was really a student of the industry, so he knew about a lot of stuff. At that time, Herbalife was being attacked by Bill Ackman, the activist, investor, the hedge fund manager, and there was a, a fight going on between him and Carlyle. And Vima had just been temporarily shut down by the FTC, so we had a lot of things to talk about. And um, as a result of all the things that were going on, we've been doing this radio show ever since. Now, we've had lots of things to expand upon. We talk about some of the current events that are happening in MLM. And then a couple of years ago, I got an interesting phone call from some guy who called himself Marcos, and he basically said he was a friend of Scott's, and he lost his number, and he wanted me to give him the number. He called me up, like, surprisingly at, like, 1 o'clock. Wait a minute. Did he just get my name wrong? After, after all these years? Let me go back. Watch Watch Eastern Time in the morning on an Easter Sunday from some guy who called himself Marcos. Marcos? I'm Greek now. And he basically said he was a friend of Scott's, and he lost his number, and he wanted me to give him the number. He Marcos Mucabros. <laughs> Marcos Mucaberos. <laughs> he called me up like surprisingly at like one o'clock Eastern time in the morning on an Easter Sunday. And I remember this because it was Easter Sunday. And my granddaughter was over, but she was sleeping. So I figured I can take some time because he had some questions about MLM. He says, can I ask you some questions about multi-level marketing? So I asked some questions and he was just, you know, fraudulent relative to the way he posed himself, thought he was doing something. And when he got finished, he told me he recorded the call, put this up on his YouTube video. And I oh, I see. You called yourself Marcus actually during that. Okay. Yes. During that call. I hung up on him because there was nothing else I wanted to discuss with him. And I just kind of imagined that he was just an idiot. And uh, what I didn't know is that he broadcast the whole entire thing live to his YouTube audience. You'll be able to see it. It's up in a couple of different places. And call me a friggin' idiot. Actually, call me a fucking idiot for Ooh. those people that want to really know. And kind of I don't think I called him a fucking idiot on the call. I think I said, you're a moron. If you don't understand this, you're a moron. And then afterwards, I think I called him an idiot. I don't know. You guys can go watch that, the Inception stream where we... It's on my page where I first uh, I first called them or first called Peter, but yeah. Kind of frosted me a little bit because that was when I got a chance to see him, the little weasel that he is, and I said, "What an idiot!" And then I kind of listened to some of the things he said and what he was saying about Scott and then the stuff that he said about me, and I said, "Ah, you know what? This guy is a jerk, and he signifies and exemplifies the idiots." or the idiotic arguments of many MLMers. And I'd rather pick on this guy than anybody else. So that's what we've been doing ever since. So Scott and I have been doing this radio show about a whole bunch of things, but just recently we've kind of focused on this little troll, like this little midget of a troll kind of a guy. You'll see him. Uh, he'll talk about this on his radio show. And, you'll, and, and Scott and I really decided we're going to concentrate on this because he's struggling so much on his channel, we're just going to put every nail in his coffin before he either just goes bankrupt and goes back to selling drugs, uh, you know, because it's the only way he's really made any money, or he's going to get his ass sued by everybody on the planet, including maybe people that we know personally, or uh, something else is going to happen, like somebody's just going to kick his ass, because I think he's maybe uh, threatened, if you will, a whole bunch of people, or maybe even taunted a whole bunch of people, so inevitably someone's going to kick his ass. So I figured, let's put the nail in the coffin while we can, you know, close the deal. We're closers in sales, that's what we do. So we'll just close Marco Mukabir. Uh, maybe even uh, pretty quickly, <laughs> certainly by the end of this year, without a doubt. Uh, but maybe even within the next couple of weeks. So I'm looking forward to just closing this guy out. So, Scott Johnson, thanks for being here on your own radio show. And Scott, I know we may have a guest. What do you mean? What do you mean shutting me down, closing me out? Are you going to reveal some master plan? By the way, dude, it was like a year ago when Peter on the show was like, Marco, Marco, we got something coming for you. So just you wait and see. And guess what? Nothing happened. <laughs> So I wonder now. I mean, he's just always building the tension. Let's take bets. What's the over-under on them still talking about me a year from now? And if we do have a guest coming in, I'll tell you when he comes in. And uh, I know because of scheduling and stuff like that, that may or may not happen. So we'll talk about other things as well. But this first half is going to be dedicated towards Marco Bucabere, always Marco, and some of the goofy stuff that he does. So Scott Johnson, thanks for being here on your own radio show. Hey, Peter, thanks for having me. Yeah, um, you, <laughs> you nailed it. Uh, this guy's a, a jerk, Marco. Now, his name is... Marco Mukaber, and he goes by Always Marco on YouTube, 
but we call him always stupid Marco. Bro, it was like two years ago when they said that in one year I would be homeless and or working at McDonald's or something like that. Uh, Mooch a goon, the shyster. And let me explain all those words because I'm not just name calling here. I'm actually labeling based on things that we know about this creep. Um, so the first part is always stupid because he is always stupid and he's oh always stupid. He's st yeah. always stupid, Marco the narco, um, because he has a three and a half hour video where he talks about uh, being a cocaine dealer. And I don't know how he's, you know, paying his bills now without dealing cocaine because he's not making anything on his <laughs> channel of any significance. Um, and and then the part about I don't know, y'all. Y'all have been pretty supportive tonight. I don't know. Is that true? Um, Mook. Mooch a goon, he calls his followers his goons, and he mooches off of them. Every show that he does, he's, he keeps begging for money from them. Every single show, he calls it a dono, right, a donation, but it's really just begging. And um, that's that's what he does. He begs from his goons and makes pennies. Uh, and I think you have some statistics. If you want to go through those, Peter, your your I'll statistics do that a little bit later. for all the money. I'll do that a little okay. bit later. Okay. So and then the shyster, he's talked about a number of different. Uh, uh, companies that he's scammed over the years, you know, anything from pizza to uh, coffee shops to airlines, <laughs> uh, you know, you name it. It, it, it runs the whole gamut. And he talks about this on his show. This isn't stuff that we're, you know, making up or, you know, trying to investigate. These are things that he's actually said on his own channel. Now he's taking a lot of this stuff down, um, particularly the three and a half hour, you know, cocaine dealer video, um, because that's not a very good look for him. Um, and I think he's almost starting to understand that. You know, he's pretty stupid, but if you repeat things long enough, even if the person is stupid, eventually something might sink in. Um, but anyway, that's that's kind of Marco. Now, you were talking about the tool scam, and just for the new listeners, and by the way, Marco is a new listener because he asked a couple of questions in his last show, I think it was, that we answer pretty much every single time at the beginning of this show. <laughs> Thank you, Devin Kelly. How's in my hometown that did it? Christmas lights show? <laughs> Hold on. That you would watch from your car and tune into a short radio signal, short range radio signal. This is eerily similar. Hilarious. My my stream chat buttons are actually working tonight. Normally these don't work. It's like I press a single button and it puts a message in chat, as you just saw there with the uh, uh, Discord one. And man, I don't know what makes it sometimes work and sometimes not work. But bro, I wish it worked all the time because it's so convenient to just press one button and drop my links, you know. But Thank you again for that, uh, Devin. Hilarious. This is a good episode already. So if he would just be a new listener and listen to the beginning part, he would get the answers to his questions that he was asking. Um, one of the one of the uh, issues, like you mentioned the tool scam, and in Amway, let me just describe what that is. It's where the upper-level distributors, they call them IBOs, independent business owners, and that really you know jacks up all the anti-MLMers to, oh, you don't own your own business, blah, blah, blah. Um, but you don't have to literally own the entire Amway business or any other MLM to be a business owner because you are owning your own business. You can put as much or little effort into it as you want. You can determine how you want to run it. Do you want to have a lot of retail sales personally? Do you want to have some retail sales and build an organization? All these things are variables that you have control over. Uh, even Walmart, you could say they don't own their own business because they sell other people's products. And, and so you could say, well, Walmart's not really a business owner either. If you want to use that, you know, poor argument to, to make your, your point. Um, and you can join any MLM you want. So, you know, pick one that you like the products is, is my message. Um, and then do it the way you want to do it. That's business ownership. It doesn't have to be every single. Heather C. Scott and Peter have been talking about me nearly three years now. No joke. Single aspect of a business ownership to be able to be called a business owner. But anyway, let me let me get back to the uh, tool scam part. So these upper level distributors, what they do is they sell tickets for meetings, make a lot of money. They sell books, make a lot of money. They sell recordings, make a lot of money. They sell phone apps, make a lot of money. They sell voicemail, make a lot of money. They sell uh, website access, make a lot of money, and probably some other things that, that I may not be aware of. But the bottom line is they make a lot of money from the tools. And I have examples on my websites that describe people who got out of Amway or actually got kicked out of Amway, um, and then they just started talking. And so, you know, these, this is very clear evidence. I'm not making anything up. It's not me, you know, making claims about how much money they made. It's, it's the people that actually used to make it describing how much they used to make compared to their Amway 
profit. And so I'll give you my um, Facebook page. And on that Facebook page on the left side, there's links to my websites, to this radio show, to my YouTube, my emails there towards the top. So all the information is there. Uh, so it's Facebook.com slash Scott Tex Johnson, S-C-O-T-T-T-E-X, J-O-H-N-S-O-N, and that's all one word. Um, and, and you'll find, I mean, there's a claim there by a guy by the name of Brig Hart, B-R-I-G-H-A-R-T, where he gave an interview to a Salt Lake City newspaper, uh, and he said, hey, I've made um, almost a million bucks a year at, from Amway, but I made 8 to $10 million a year from the tools. And, and that's probably the most extreme example, but there's other folks that have said, oh, yeah, I made at least twice as much. Uh, another guy said, I paid my emeralds and above four to five times um, what they made from Amway and tool profit and those sorts of things. Now, I don't have any problem making money. That's not the issue here. Um, and this is where Marco accuses you of running a tool scam with your lead generation, generation business. Um, and he just completely misses the mark. He's just so stupid. It's just amazing. Um, and, and so – the problem here is that the Amway distributors, these upper-level distributors, are just raking in the cash. They pretend, by everything they say, that their success came from Amway, right? Amway, 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 products, 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 downline, downline, volume, all these kinds of things. And, and ain't it great? You know, that was the favorite um, line of the late great, not so great, uh, Dexter Yeager. Ain't it great? Well, sure, it was great. He's dead now. But, um, you know, there's there's this tool scam that continues, and it's not just in Jaeger's organization. It's in pretty much all of them that, that I can tell. Um, but anyway, this this money, this, this lifestyle, I should say, that they claim to have from Amway really comes mostly from the tool scam, and that's the problem. And that's what makes a tool profit a scam because they don't talk about it while they're in. They only talk about it after they get kicked out. And so most prospects and most downline have no idea that the vast, vast majority of these people's lifestyle comes from the tools. And on top of that, most of these people, I believe, I can't prove this, I don't have their you know, tax returns or anything, but I believe that the pin that they're wearing, they earned it one time and then they went backwards, one or two pins, but their lifestyle did not take a hit because of the tool scam profit. And so the tool scam is actually, you know, the it's in multiple dimensions. It's not just one solitary thing. It's if you start peeling the onion, as they say, you can see that there's multiple layers of this um, that make it even worse and worse and worse as you look at it. Um, and they'll, they won't tell you that they went back. Are you, are you guys following along with the bingo for real? Backwards and pin either. Um, they'll wear their pin proudly. Mine's getting filled that, up that's fast. The pin that they're maintaining. And, and one of the main um, ways to know, or at least be very confident that they're no longer at the pin that they were at is there's a pin uh, at each level at, at platinum and above called a, a founder's pin. So, you know, platinum is a certain level and a founder's means that you keep that for 12 out of 12 months versus six out of 12 months to get the platinum. And so there's a whole lot of non founders pins out there, but there's very, very few founders pins. And that's a very clear indication that they did not maintain their pin level because the business, any MLM, is constantly <laughs> Thank falling you, Kemes. This is another reason why drinking beer isn't good for you. So true, so true. Apart. Thank you, Kemes. The only way you can build an MLM is to replace the people faster than they're getting out. And in Amway, they're getting out very rapidly uh, because of the tool scam and, and many other reasons. It's not just one reason. Um, but anyway, that's what makes the tool scam the tool scam is the fact that <laughs> both the upper-level distributors and the Amway Corporation themselves will not talk about this. And, and so it's pretty much hidden. Now, the Internet has helped uh, expose us a little bit, but they're still putting people in. This tool scam, is it in the room with us right now? And um, especially, you know, people that are not on the Internet, young people that just don't know how the world works and those kinds of things. Um, and, and they get enchanted by the presentation and they just get in without checking things out. So <laughs> even though it's helped a little bit, there's a long ways to go as far as disclosing. <sighs> Beyond says, I'm still planning to add a multiplayer feature to the bingo. <laughs> so fucked. That's hilarious, dude. Um, the, the tool scam and making people more aware of it. So that's problem number one. Uh, there's, there's problem number two that I see is the second big problem. Now, I see for Amway, the big tool scam is the right number right. one problem. Marco said recently, it's not even the top three. Well, Marco, you're always stupid because it is the top one. <laughs> if someone makes multiple times more from the tools than they do from Amway and they pretend it came from Amway, that by definition in my book is the problem number one. And, and he likes to say things like <clears throat> a lot of the other anti-MLM huns talk about, oh, I was you know, asked to work really hard or, oh, uh, they put pressure on me. Oh, uh, you know, I, I had this this issue with my upline, oh, all these little personal things. Well, that may...
Yes, RK, the tool scam is books and other things like coaching. Yes. Things that are accoutrements to being in the MLM that aren't actually the direct fees associated with joining. That may have been your personal worst experience as far as being in Amway or another MLM, but none of those things are legally actionable, right? You can't tell the FTC that your upline hurt your feelings and expect them to do anything. But we should expect the FTC, if they're lying about the tool scam, to do something because that is showing a business model that's very different than reality. Um, and why the FTC hasn't done anything, you got me, uh, but they haven't. Um, and I, w- I want to talk a little bit about this a little bit later too with, with Bill Keep and Unread, if you can remind me, Peter. <laughs> I wanted to move on to the second big problem, which if it's not – if it's not universal, it's almost universal. Now, I do have some indications that some of the uh, guests on, on Marco's show, and I suspected this, and I even said this a couple of years ago on the show, that he was picking on MLMs that I thought had the best opportunity to not be a pyramid scheme. And, and we define a pyramid scheme on this show as if you have at least as much products being sold to outside customers, people who are not part of the MLM compensation plan, that makes you a legitimate MLM versus a pyramid scheme. Now you could have other problems. You know, we know of other issues that, that pop up from time to time besides tool scams and, and lack of retail sales. But as far as the definition of a I want to address Andrew's comment here. Andrew says, Real talk, I was kind of caught in the tool scam. Yeah, Andrew, if you were in an MLM, chances are you have been to some degree uh, caught in the tool scam. If you were in an MLM, chances are you did pay for an event. You did go to some event. You did pay for some additional material, whether it was a book that you bought, uh, a course, uh, an app, back office, whatever it was. In some, to some level, even if you bought a t-shirt, yeah, you, you probably were uh, part of the tool scam if you were in an MLM, for sure. My point with Peter and Scott is that I don't think the tool scam, like the tool scam is a symptom of being in an MLM. It is one of the many ways that you are uh, misled and taken advantage of for your time and money in an MLM. But it is not the problem with MLM the way Scott Johnson says that it is. Oh, tool scams and lack of retail sales. Well, it's like, what about the uh, indoctrinating people and turning them against their friends and family and brainwashing them? You know, what about the false promise that they're ever going to make any money when they say all you have to do is recruit three, recruit five, recruit eight, whatever it is? Like, I think those are more prevalent issues. Uh, I think the tool scam, it's like, it's just a, it's just a given. It's like, yeah, of course there's, of course they're selling books and CDs and, you know, extra trainings and events like of course they are that's that's part of the whole shit but is that the main thing no i don't think so i think the main thing is that it's a ponzi scheme with extra steps you are recruited you pay a couple hundred bucks you get a starter kit or you get something some opportunity and then you recruit other people to buy into the scheme that's the real pyramid scheme of the whole thing um the tool scam if it wasn't part of that mlm system would not be nearly as as big so it's like Scott, Scott Johnson is so obsessed with the tool scam as though it is the thing, the engine that is driving the entire industry, and it's not. So that's just an objective fact. So, you know, tool scams are bad, but the fact that he goes on and on harping on it is just, it's insane. Like, if you don't talk, if you're anti-MLM, even if you're doing good work, if you are talking about anything But Amway, the Amway tool scam, tool scams, and lack of retail sales, Scott Johnson is not satisfied. A pyramid scam, that is the lack of retail sales. And you can't just use that P word for whatever you want. And Paz, so true. Scott is the kind of guy that would be okay with the tool scam if he was making money off of it. He was burned by it, so now he's upset. Further evidence to that is the fact that his friend, Peter, most likely their best friends because they talk to each other, you know, so frequently – his best friend, Peter, sells a tool scam. Leads. That is part of the tool scam, buying leads. Absolutely it is. In 2023, leads, really? But he's fine with it because it's his boyfriend, Peter. So what can you do? want to complain about because that's just not reality. And, and we can go through some of the history of, of that word pyramid uh, through the years, through all the different 
you know, legal lawsuits and settlements to show that that is the definition um, as far as the FTC is concerned, as far as I'm concerned as well. Um, so when you have a lack of retail sales, the problem is you don't have a real uh, real world demand, right? You don't have a, a, a free market demand for the products. And we know that most of these products are overpriced. And so what you have as a result of overpriced products being bought mostly by the distributors with a little bit of, you know, what I call sympathy sales, you know, thrown in there, maybe close friends and relatives um, want to support you in your business. So they buy some stuff, at least short term, um, before they realize, gee, this stuff's really expensive. I'm not going to. I agree, Lauren. It is wild to me that Peter sells leads and that's not a problem for Scott. Scott has never had the balls to address my question for him of how do you justify Peter selling tools? Like how is Peter in your mind? not selling a tool scam. How is that not part of a tool scam? So, you know, maybe he'll answer it on this episode. Keep doing this, um, that kind of thing. And, and so that's a big problem. Um, and that's something that I would hope that the FTC with their new review of, of the uh, business opportunity rules understands not only the tool scam, but also they need to have a bright line drawn on this 50% criteria. Because right now there's not a criteria for adequate retail sales. And the FTC has been, I don't know what the right word is, afraid, um, incompetent. I, I don't know what is going on in their minds, obviously, except not much. Um, but they need to draw this bright line, whether it's 50% or, you know, even if it's something higher, like you have to have at least twice as much retail sales compared to your own household consumption, um, you know, on average across the whole distributorships. Uh, whatever the rule they want to come up with is going to be better than having no guidance, which is what they have now. Because um, they have settled with some companies recently, Vima and Herbalife, where that 50%, it's not exactly 50%, but it's pretty close. Um, <clears throat> they should make that industry-wide. That would solve a lot of problems. I think a lot of MLMs would either go out of business or do what AdvoCare chose to do a couple years ago, which is become a direct selling company instead of an MLM, where direct selling is where you are connected as a distributor Directly to the company. Jesus, you have no just upline, keeps going no on and on. And you make your money by selling the products to customers. That's direct selling. Uh, don't get that confused with MLM. It's very different. Um, actually, listen to this part. We might as well address some of the things that he said, indicating this first. Over and over, and it generally is. But you've never listened to it, or you've never paid attention to it, or it's never sunk in. So, Marco, go back to the beginning and listen to the whole thing, uh, because you're so stupid. Marco will be hearing this part of the, the show. You Sorry, I, I shouldn't skip over. That's Peter, and we can we can move on. I know you have a couple things online. And you make your money by selling the products to customers. That's direct selling. Uh, don't get that confused with MLM. It's very different. Um, but anyway, I'll, I'll stop there. Let you make any comments, Peter, and we can we can move on. I know you have a couple things you want to discuss, so uh, you can make any comments on what I said, and we can move on. I just want to uh, quickly say, because maybe Marco will be hearing this part of the, the show. Hey, Marco, you need to go back to the beginning and for the first time ever listen to – our lead in because that's where we cover some of the questions that you've been asking over and over uh, because you're so stupid you don't actually listen to this part you think this part is the same thing over and over and it generally is but you've never listened to it or you've never paid attention to it or it's never sunk in so Marco go back to the beginning and listen to the whole thing so back to you Peter thanks oh, wow okay so well he didn't answer any of my questions he didn't answer how Peter's uh, leads business is not a tool scam and I'm sure he didn't answer any of the other questions that I've been asking because I would have felt some satisfaction at uh, the words that he said right there. And of course, I do not. So let me just say for, for Scott Johnson, who, as the bingo sheet clearly says, um, there's one part here. Scott disproves his point by talking too much. Well, he did that again here when he tried to make the distinction between MLM and direct selling. He is right in his definition of direct selling, but where it falls on its face is that that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist anymore. Name me one business, one business opportunity that is actually a viable way to make a living, not millions of dollars, just a living, okay? Competitive with minimum wage at least. Name me a business where you selling a product, you bought a product, okay, from a company and now, or, or sorry, you bought a product from a company and now you have to resell it for a profit or the company is going to front you the product. You just have to sell it and earn a commission. 
Name me one industry where that is in 2023 still a viable business that you can make a living off of. Please humor me in the chat. I'll wait. I'm very, I'm very confused. No, I'm not confused because then they'll say, of course, of course you're confused. You're always stupid. I'm not confused at all. I know the truth. It doesn't exist. It's just, and, and that's not me being like a, a conspiracy theorist. It's just the fact. Yeah, and Paz says, uh, and Paz says drug dealing. <laughs> yeah. It's just a fact. It, certain business models eventually just don't exist anymore because they're no longer applicable. We have technology that renders them useless. Blockbuster is the example I always give. In, in the past, in order to rent a movie, you had to drive down to Blockbuster, look through the aisles, see what movies they had, rent the tape or the DVD, take it home, rewind the tape, you know, pay for the rental, bring it back on time or get charged late fees, and on and on and on and on. That was where you went to buy your popcorn and your snacks and whatever. You go to Blockbuster. Then technology advanced to the point where Netflix was a thing. And now Blockbuster just couldn't survive against the competition of Netflix where you had the convenience to be able to lay in bed and press one button and watch an even greater selection of movies streaming without having to get a physical disc or tape that was a liability because you could break it. Direct selling is the same thing. People do not live in isolated rural cowboy towns like they did many, many years ago where, oh, it's, you know, Tuesday, the vacuum salesman or the whatever salesman from the next town is over here going door to door selling the vacuums or whatever it is. And that's what Peter's, I use vacuums because that was uh, Peter, what Peter used to do. He used to work for Electrolux and selling, selling vacuums. So... It just doesn't exist anymore. Every person has access to Amazon. You can click a button and get whatever it is that you want delivered usually within a single day with Amazon Prime. How could you compete with that? Everybody has a grocery store near their house, a Walmart, a Target, a Shoppers Drug Mart. So who are, where are all these direct sellers that the Direct Selling Association claims there are millions of in North America? Where are they? <laughs> where are they? Why am I not getting sold stuff every day on Instagram? Why are, not, why are there not people DMing me every day about their thing that they're selling? Where is it? Direct selling. It doesn't exist. It's a unicorn. It, it, it's so funny. You know, I was, I'm re-listening to the audiobook of uh, Ponzinomics, which you can get at the link in the description. There's a, a link to Ponzinomics uh, on Amazon, the, the auto, audiobook or the physical paperback book. There's links for Canada and Australia. It's my affiliate link, full disclosure. And I'm listening back to it. Uh, and I'm at the part where Robert is talking about how even to say that you are anti MLM is sort of untrue. Because first of all, multi-level marketing is a made up term used to describe this system that is a Ponzi scheme with extra steps, this endless chain pay to play pyramid scheme where there is a product. And so they hide the recruitment inside the purchase of a product. They, they link them so that they can say, oh, well, you know, it, it's all about retail sales, but really it's not about retail sales. Nobody gives a fuck about your product. They only bought it because they were being recruited. They wanted the opportunity, the dream that you sold them. So multi-level marketing, what does it mean? It's, it's, it's made up. It's a, it's a flim flam. It's a nothing burger. It is the term that they used to cover up the fact that it is a pyramid scheme. And what is a pyramid scheme? It's a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. So to say that you are anti-MLM, multi-level marketing, well, multi-level marketing isn't even a real thing when you really think about it. It's a made up term that they used to try to cover their own ass and appear more legitimate. So to say you are, you know, Robert in the book brings up the analogy. He goes, if the government said that 
legally unicorns exist. Unicorns are legally verified to exist. And you didn't agree with that. Would you be anti-unicorn? No, you're not anti-unicorn. It's just fucking common sense. It's just common knowledge. Unicorns do not exist. Or at least I'm pretty sure unicorns don't exist. So to say that you're anti-MLM, okay, so I'm anti the made up thing that is used to dis you know what I mean? It's such a it's such a weird position to be in. Because I am anti-MLM for the sake of ease of explanation, multi-level marketing, because the public awareness on this is still so very primitive. Like a lot of people still don't know the difference between what's a pyramid scheme, what's a Ponzi scheme, what's an MLM. The answer, in my opinion, is that an MLM is just the fancy name that they came up with for a pyramid scheme. And what is a pyramid scheme? A Ponzi scheme with extra steps. They all are really are just, there's a Ponzi scheme, which most people understand what it is. And then a pyramid scheme is a little sort of uh, twist on that to throw people off. And then MLM is a, a, a fake name on top of it to further throw people off the scent of what it is. It's a Ponzi scheme with extra steps. It's what it is. So... <sighs> yeah. Anyways. It's just so anti, anti business. It's not real. And anyways, the point I was making with this was that with him trying to, you know, explain to me the difference between MLM and direct selling. Well, that's not a good defense, Scott, because you're saying that MLM which isn't a real thing, needs to be distinguished from direct selling, which is also no longer a real thing. Oh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not a Ponzi scheme. It's direct selling. Oh, so it's not a Ponzi scheme. It's a thing that doesn't even happen anymore. Good defense. Literally, madness. You're trying to explain, you're trying to defend something that doesn't exist by making a distinction between it and something else that also doesn't exist. We're literally talking about fairies and unicorns here. Insanity. I'm reading you guys' comments. Beyond says, I, need, I also need to know that you don't even need to see a drug dealer anymore. Exactly. Even for selling drugs, something that even after direct sales had long died, up until a couple years ago, if in order to buy weed, you still had to call the weed man and go link up with him. Even that doesn't exist anymore. Even now you can order weed legally and have it delivered to you like it's fucking Uber Eats. So tell me, even drugs, you don't need to have direct sales for anymore. So what are we talking about? So name me one industry. I, don't, I didn't see any uh, comments in the chat that told me an industry that relies on direct sales or where someone could make a, a living off of direct sales. It's just, it's madness, man. Yeah, it's a disguise, Benjamin, so true. They're coming for the name affiliate marketing, but since that's the real thing, I'm not sure it'll work. Also, Pure Romance is saying it's omni-marketing now. Multi-level marketing is such a, a misleading term because it's not multi-level, it's infinite level marketing. It's a pyramid scheme. Insane. <sighs> All right. Garage sales, yeah, garage sale, great example. So one of the reasons why we're dedicating this first portion of Building Fortress Radio to Marco is because he listened to a radio show that we did with Glenn, uh, and Glenn's coming back on Monday, but I figured we, we might as well address some of the things that he said relative to the comments that he made on our conversation with Glenn. And Glenn was a gentleman who was on Marco's, uh, radio, uh, on Marco's podcast, or whatever he's going to call it first, and then uh, Marco kicked him off, and he's been on our show maybe a half a dozen or so times. And he's a good guy. We have a nice conversation. He's um, 
somebody whose dad was in Amway, so we have a lot of things to reference relative to Amway as well. But some of the things that I want to comment on is how Marco does not know how to tell the truth. Now, I don't know if it's because he's just a sociopath <laughs> and a psychological or uh, uh, li liar, um, or whether he's like when he was a little boy, he, he kind of learned that he couldn't tell the truth because maybe he was caught doing so many things all the time, <laughs> or maybe he's something else, I don't know. But whatever kind of mental illness Marco has, he does not know how to tell the truth. It's always his version of the story as opposed to the version of the story. And I'll give you an example. <laughs> One of the things that he said was um, when people asked him uh, through his chat, so what do you, what's going on with you guys? Like, why is Mingles always, you know, going after you? It's, the answer is real simple. He says, well, I only called the guy once, Marco says. I only prank called this guy once. And those are not true statements. He's called me so many different times. And for those people that want some of the proof or some of the voicemails, you can go listen. If you go to a website that someone put together, it's called alwaysmarco.lol. -L. So for those people that are watching and paying attention, if you can type, um, maybe you're on the Internet, you might be able to even use your, your voice recognition to be able to go in there and do it through Google. You'll be able to go to alwaysmarco.lol, <laughs> and the LOL is because he's a joke. You can actually hear some of the previous voicemails that he's <laughs> left me specifically. So I have screenshots of him calling, um, uh, you know, like, a dozen times in a night. I have voicemails of him doing and saying different and various things. And then, like some of them, I'll just kind of play with one right over here. I think, let's see, this is, oh, this is when he was imitating Coffeezilla, one of the other times he called me. So here we go. Play it. It'll start in a second, I think. Let's go see. <laughs> I love it. Always sociopathic Marco. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Uh, fuck, I was going to say something. Debate the Emperor, Peter. Yeah. Um, yes, Glenn was in the chat. He wasn't kicked out. Glenn was literally in the chat last stream. I love it. How much do you learn about yourself from these guys? Like living your own life, I'm sure you were able to tell truths, but now we've learned that for the first time it's not true. Yeah, I find I learn new stuff about myself every time they do a stream. <laughs> and pass. Oh, with the lipstick. Goodness gracious. Here we go. Let's listen to it. Hey, this is Coffeezilla. Just wanted to see if you'd be interested in coming on my show to talk about multi level marketing. Give me a call back. Thanks. So that's like one. Here was another one. By the way, this is actually me, the CoffeeZilla one. That was actually me. One night, it was like I was laying in bed, and I just thought, let me call Peter. And I left him a voicemail. Sometimes I just leave him voicemails just so he knows I'm still, I still care. Hey, Ming. How's it going? Happy New Year. Hope you're doing well. Hope you had a good holiday. Um, this is Always Marco calling, uh, a.k.a. Marco, a.k.a. Always Stupid Marco. You know the drill. Anyways, um, listen, it's 2022. It's a new year. We're another year older, another year wiser. And I just think last year, you know, with whatever happened between Scott and I, we sort of got off on the wrong foot. And I was just hoping maybe we could bury the hatchet in the new year and start fresh. And I think we're stronger together than we are apart. We could really help build up each other's shows, both my live stream and YouTube channel and Building Fortunes Radio. So you know my number, uh, assuming you have caller ID and you're not using a home phone and you actually have like a smartphone. But give me a call back. Let's chat. And, um, you know, I have some great ideas on how to improve your guys' show and, and, and make it a success. So uh, let's talk. All right. Appreciate it. Bye, next. That sounds like a couple more than one or two, and maybe even he's um, changed his heart. Here's Peter, another you know one. I love you. I just wish there was some better quality headshots of you on the internet that I could potentially use for thumbnails. So, you know, that's kind of creepy a little bit. And he's <laughs> left me some other ones that I will not play on this because we might have decent people listening in. 
But for those people that are wondering, you know, like the guy can't even tell the truth. He's called me multiple times, all the time. Let's do it again. Let me call him again right now. I'm, some of the messages that he's left are too, um, I don't know, Scott, how would you, vulgar was a, a really good word to be able to, um, to say, but now, you know, there's just no way. So that's number one. The guy doesn't know how to tell the truth. Next is he doesn't know how to tell the truth about, like, for instance, his involvement in the MLM conference. He clearly said on his own radio show that he invited himself on the MLM conference. And that's one of the reasons why Bill Keep had to find a place for him in the MLM expert section because the social media panel was already filled. So he doesn't have to tell the truth over there. He also doesn't have to tell the truth relative to the conversation that we had with Robert Fitzpatrick. And I've had this conversation so many times. The conversation. Here we go. I'm calling Peter. Come on. Will it ever go to voicemail? Hello, this is Peter, and thank you for calling. Chances are, if you're receiving this message, I'm here, just on the other line. So since you called, you probably want to leave me a message. Leave me a quick and a detailed message. Repeat your phone number a few times, and I'll call you back. So again, please, repeat your phone number a few times. Leave a quick and a detailed message. I'll speak to you soon. Thank you. At the tone, please record your message. When you've finished recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. <clears throat> Hi, Peter. It's Papa. Just wanted to check in with you, see how you're doing, make sure you're being a good boy. How's Ming Jr.? He's doing good too? Oh, good. Hope you guys had fun at the birthday party. Anyways, hope I can come on the show soon, or maybe you guys can call into mine. But realistically, I know you'd rather have me call into yours. So I'm down whenever. You let me know, and I will be glad to direct all my audience, all my goons, to listen to the show so you can school me live with your infinite wisdom. Anyways... Don't be a bad boy, because when I was a bad boy and I was a kid, I got spankings, and uh, it hurt. So I don't want to see that happen to you, okay? Love you. Mwah. Marco. Come on, Marco. Fuck him. Ball. Marco. 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 Remember, Play Marco? Marco? You know everything. Remember? Remember, Marco, you know everything. I don't, I don't think my number is blocked. I think it still rings. He just chooses not to answer. Or I am blocked, but he still gets the voicemails. I'm not, this, I'm not sure. Um, Maximilian says, the Building Fortunes bits are getting old. I still have fun with them, but don't worry, Maximilian. There's a lot of content coming. So don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Um, your direct MLM content is more productive. I know, but I'm live streaming. I'm just having a silly goose time. So I'm still working on the direct MLM stuff, but I can't have fun. Come on now. Unsubscribe if you hate it so much. LOL. Uh, all right, let's continue. Let's continue. Let's continue. Here we go. The I had with Robert Fitzpatrick was real simple. Robert Fitzpatrick accused me, or I'm sorry, he didn't accuse me. He stated in his book and his audio book that I was fined and sued, which is factually false. 
I gave him the benefit of the doubt and the courtesy of a phone call to see where his research was, where because he's supposed to be a researcher, and he didn't provide that research. I said, Robert, um, why don't you do me a favor? If somebody ever asked me about this, I'd like it to come from you that you did that I have not been fined or accused. So we had a somewhat pleasant conversation. I've had conversations before with Robert Fitzpatrick. Matter of fact, he's even been on our radio show. If you go to Building Forges Radio and you look for Robert Fitzpatrick, you'll be able to see this several times that he's been on our radio show. And he knew he was on his radio show. So relative to that, towards the end of the conversation, I was talking to him about this company and that company, I'm not mentioning the company's names because these are companies that um, I have contacts with. And I was talking about how they do direct sales and MLM and blended conversations. He was not following the conversation, not at all. He was so just on his regular, typical anti-MLM thing. Towards the end of the conversation, I realized at that point, and remember, I listened to his book, where he said he doesn't interview pro MLMers because he can never change their mind. So I realized that, you know what, he's an anti MLMer and I'm never going to change his mind. I'm not even trying to change his mind. I'm interested in educating him about a company. Somebody got to get me the fuck yeah audio from Peter where he's, I don't know if that's already in the discord, but we need that. That I know that does MLM and direct sales and manages both channels and it'd be an interesting thing for him to take a look at, flew straight over his head. So at the end of a call where I got what I wanted, which was him writing that I was not fined nor sued, um, at the end, he threw out a Hail Mary last gasp. So tell me one that's doing it the right way. And I simply said, now remember that he's an anti-MLM guy and not necessarily a pro-MLM friend at all. And most of the things that he will mention have already been taken out of context. And he's kind of got this endless chain, this five by five by five thing going on. And he's got this blind, if you will, uh, uh, ignorance towards uh, no MLM could ever be any good. And the same thing with Bill Keep and Marco and some of the other anti-MLM people. So I just said, you know what, I'm not going to give this guy the benefit of the doubt because he's probably going to talk to Marco which, by the way, he did, and relinquished the conversation that we're having right now. So I said, no, I don't know any, because I was not going to give him the benefit of the doubt, because here's what would happen. Conversation would go back, people would be discussing it, and the idiots in the chat. So for those people that are on Marco's chat right now, if you look at the screens and you look at the comments, they're a bunch of immature and or ignorant and or cowardly things that people say, or just plain stupid, uh, things that people say, and really it's the cesspool of the internet. The chats of most of these types of issues are a waste of time, and that's proven certainly on Marco's part. So I said, I'm not going to do that to anyone who's trying to respectfully build an MLM company. I'm not going to give them the benefit of the doubt of being attacked by these friggin' idiots unfairly. So I said to him, no, I don't know any. And I've clearly stated that several times on this radio show, previous radio shows, and Marco still cannot tell the truth. So I'm, I really think he's retarded. So I don't think maybe he understands the truth. We're going to kind of identify some of those things as well. But the bottom line is that man just does not know how to tell the truth. So Scott, is, he's done the same thing with you. He's done the same thing with me. Marco's a pathological liar. If you just listen long enough, you'll hear all the contradictions. And besides that, the shyster that he is, with all the examples, Scott, of the um, – the uh, airlines, the grocery stores, the telephone call that he made. By the way, what he's referring to when he says, I scam the grocery store and the pizza place and the whatever, the Starbucks, he's referring to when I return something and exchange it for something else because the first thing went bad or because it wasn't right. That's what he's referring to. To me, that he got out of having to pay and all the other things that he's done. And I just have to also say, the guy is really kind of weird because the other thing that he doesn't tell the truth about is his obsession with having people look at his wiener 
this is his voice, boys and girls. <laughs> He's like you. The first time he heard this, Let's go. he didn't know what to do. Go back on previous radio shows Let's or listen. previous podcasts. He did not know what to do when he heard this. Have you seen my wiener? What? Have you seen my wiener? That's not my voice. Now we know that's not him. Okay. So here's the other one. Okay, this is me. What's going on, man? Word, word. All right. Uh, yeah, so loud. Like, you know, what did you say to me? Is that? Yeah, like I was just wondering if you wanted to like, see my wiener, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I'm not into that shit, bro. Can't nah, even hear bro, it. I even like that. Bro, check out my wiener. Like, I'll just check Yo, it out. Yo, bro, 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 bro. I don't know you very well, but like, do you want to see my wiener? Can't even hear it. Well, but like, do you want to see my wiener? Well, but like, do you want to see my wiener? So this guy's got a real problem with asking people to see his private parts. <laughs> and I tell you, some of the other voicemails that this man has left for me before, but I will not play them on this because <laughs> I don't think uh, it would be appropriate. So having said that, Scott, the man is mentally ill. He's a pathological <laughs> liar, doesn't know how to tell the truth. Um, he, he manipulates things to his advantage, and, uh, and he's a freak. So the reality is, is that his goons, think. they may like to listen to him, and they may be appealing and listening to him as well. And I know um, I was somewhat disappointed in Eliza, but not surprised. Let me just say two things. First of all, thank you to Audrey Burroughs for the donation. Really appreciate that, the Audrey. Ball. Does it ever get hard listening to the, this crazy stuff about you? You know, it doesn't get hard, but it is – it's just funny. I mean, you can't let this stuff bother you if you do. If you're going to go be a YouTuber and hope that your channel actually gets views and people actually watch you and you get subscribers – by the way, we're at 60.8K subs. Don't worry about that. If, you, uh, if you're going to go down that path, you have to accept what comes with it. And this is just one of the things that come with it. Although, I really don't know if there are... There are probably not even like A-list celebrities that have the type of consistent hate that I received from Peter and Scott. Like, who, what other celebrity do you know where there's an entire podcast dedicated to just hating on them every week? Like, I got I to gotta big myself up for that. Um, thank you for that. Audrey. I will say though, you know what? I learned something. I actually did learn something about myself with that whole wiener audio. The, the first time they played that whole audio where it's the, the voice is saying, do you want to see my wiener or whatever? Hey, uh, do you want to see my wiener? I was like, what the fuck am I listening to? Like, what is this? Is this like one of their sound effects? It's just like another thing they're making up. But later on, Thanks to my cousin Gabby, I realized that actually, that audio saying, do you want to see my wiener? That actually is me. And I'll tell you what the context is. Thank God for my cousin Gabby, because I literally forgot about this. My cousin Gabby, he's a professional videographer, cinematographer, video editor, okay? Okay. And he often works as a contractor, a contracted like hire on movie sets, TV shows, uh, corporate, whatever. Anything that needs to be filmed, basically, right? He does everything. So I had forgotten about this. But in 2015, eight years ago, right? Yeah, eight years ago in 2015, he, my cousin Gabby had invited me or had asked me on behalf of a production team that he was working with, he asked me to play a character in a sketch, like a video that they were making. And in the sketch, I would play a YouTuber who was like a YouTube prankster. And so it was sort of like a parody of the YouTube pranksters of the time, like Vitaly and... Uh, Fousey tube and shit like that. Like it was a spoof of that. And so he reminded me that there was a scene in this video where I, as the character, had like a pack of hot dogs. 
You know how like there are those YouTube videos from back in the day where like, um, you know, the prankster goes up to like uh, a girl and he's like, do you want to bang? And then it, he pulls out like a can of an energy drink and it's called bang energy. Like I remember there was one like that. Or like I remember the Nelk boys had one where they were like, they got pulled over by some cops and they said to the cops, we got a bunch of Coke in the trunk. And then the cops opened the trunk and it's cans of Coca-Cola. So it was sort of like a scene that was mocking that. It was making fun of that. And so I had a package of hot dogs that were like sealed up in plastic. And the character I'm playing, I say to another actor, it's all, it's all scripted, right? Like we're not actually, I'm not actually saying this to people on the street. I said to the other actor, I said in the scene, do you want to see my wiener? And then I pull out the pack of hot dogs and it's supposed to be like, it's supposed to be pointing out how stupid the whole YouTube, you know, prank culture is. I didn't write it. I was just, they told me what to say. I was just an actor. Mind you, this is 28, 2015. So I was 18 years old or 19 years old. And I did it because my cousin asked me to come be in it. So, but like I said, I had completely forgot about it. So when I first heard Peter play it on Losing Fortunes, I was like, what is that voice? Like, who, who is that? But I was reminded, it actually is me. So that is 2015 me saying, do you want to see my wiener? And uh, that is the context of the clip. I don't even think that video is up anymore. So I don't know how they got it. I wouldn't even know what to search for to find it. But um, yeah, that is, that, is, that is me. That is my voice. So I, Always Lying Marco has told the truth at least once. But somewhat disappointed in Eliza because I know that she started off as a Marco goon and she didn't like us. We did a couple of radio shows with her on the addictions, and we gave her the benefit and the, um, how would you say, I don't know. I think we treated her with respect. And then on the recent one, the comments that Eliza was making about us, and me specifically, um, were just, you know, not that I'm surprised, but she went back to the goon type of comments that she was making before, which is somewhat, I guess, not surprising, but it's just the way it is. So back to you, Scott. Yeah, Peter. In fact, you know, last show we had her on our show, um, we gave her the microphone. We said, hey, you know, you can ask us any question you want. And she asked me the question, well, yeah, I do have a question. Uh, why did you call me an idiot or whatever I called her? I don't remember the exact word, but it was something like. By the way, bingo. Horizontally. Got him. Any of you guys have a bingo yet? Like idiot, um, and I said, "Well, you know, I'm a, I'm not a, I don't punch people, I counterpunch." And you actually said something about Peter and I being POSs, and so I. Beyond, I like that poem in the chat. There once were two chaps, Scott and Peter, whose radio show couldn't be sweeter, but envy did rise when Marco's YouTube skies brought success. That made their hearts teeter. So true. They simply punched back. And um, I wanted to read the exact comment she made. This is on a video that Marco did about three weeks ago. The title is WFG is in trouble. So that's World Financial Group is in trouble. Exclamation mark. That's the title of the video. And it's it, uh, 40 minutes and eight seconds in. Eliza Grace said, I'd actually love to go on their show and just hand those POS men their ASSESs. Okay. And, and so that was the shot across the bow. <laughs> I punched back and called her an idiot, and Marco accused me of not answering the question. Well, Marco, if you think about it a little bit, and I know that you know, young people's brains don't fully develop until they're 25, but you're 27, yeah. so maybe you missed the boat. Yeah. Actually, I did respond, and, and maybe you can think about that for a second. I know you have the uh, attention span of a squirrel, <laughs> but try to just think about I really did respond to her, um, and, and, uh, and she couldn't remember what the context was. Well, I went back and listened to the – few minutes before this 40 minute point in the video it was basically um marco was playing 
our show on his show where you were talking about thumbs up the stream addiction and how bad it is and, and how so many people's lives get ruined by that. And then Marco went into his little spiel about when he was young and he watched all the Batman movies and he was playing with his little Batman figures and that was the highlight of his life. Um, and then this was kind of an off, off to the side discussion, which by the way happens a lot with Marco's videos is his goons are actually having conversations that have absolutely nothing to do with what he's talking about, which is pretty funny. Um, but anyway, that's the context of it. And um, I don't think she really did um, hand us anything on the two shows she was on because um, we did handle her respectfully, I think more respectfully than she deserved. And certainly from the last video she did on Marco's channel um, and giving him – a lot of money, not a lot, but a lot probably to her and to him. I would say, Eliza, you're still an idiot. So there's my, <laughs> there's my Eliza. I'll close the book on that little chapter. And and by the way, Eliza, what a fucking pussy you are, Scott. You won't say shit to any of your guests while they're on the your radio show or whatever internet podcast. But you'll say it after the fact. You are a bitch, bro. I can't wait to see what they say about Glenn now that I bigged up Glenn. You're welcome to come back if you want to continue any of these discussions. Um, you know, anyone is welcome to come on the show. Any goon, any non-goon, anybody at all, except for uh, always stupid. Except me, the one guy that they want to constantly, you know, go back and forth with. Makes sense. Make it make sense. Narco, because he's just, like you said, he's he's way past being competent he's he's a nut and he's, and he's we don't retarded. Just... I, don't th I don't think the man i don't think the man actually he's knows retarded. how to think i think he's retarded so having a conversation with a retard makes no sense yeah no i agree um and, and i'll hand it back to you if you want to go through the five by five by five because i have something yeah. to add to that too um <laughs> uh, go, go right ahead it's uh, just a great example of like sorry eliza but you can't say i didn't tell you so i knew it was going to end up with them being mad just being retarded. So he sings the praises of Robert Fitzpatrick. And by the way, we've had many conversations about Robert Fitzpatrick that many of the conversations or many of the uh, arguments that he brings up about you know being anti-MLM, we all agree with. And I don't know what's so difficult with understanding that we say when it's done right, we're pro-MLM. When it's done wrong, it's anti-MLM. So what's so difficult to, re to think about that? If someone says, you know, taking advantage of people and, you know, treating like in a negative cult-like situation, that's the stuff that I think most of us would agree is bad. So, you know, there's lots of things to be critical about in MLM. There's lots of things to praise about MLM as well. And when it's done wrong, it's done wrong. Well, one of the things that we both have constantly said about Robert Fitzpatrick's whole career is he makes this thing about this endless chain. I take and responsibility. This endless chain just doesn't make any sense because it's never Benjamin thank you for gifting the membership the Benjaminship to Monica Del Coro you're wrong you're fucking poor thank you I appreciate that Obama dude look at all the green in the chat billions and billions soon everybody's gonna be a member and I love it I hope so dude love it love it love it love it love it all right Mental ming tardation, yeah. Uh, appreciate you, Eliza. All right, let's go. It happened in reality. And you know what, Scott? One of the funny things about Marco is whenever he gets frustrated, he grabs his little calculator. And when he gets his little calculator, he sits there cracking like that. And he's kind of whining a little bit, like whining. And he's kind of tapping the buttons and like, five by 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 five. <laughs> and was really funny. The baby crying sound effects in the back. I'm dead. <laughs> so Marco, on his last thing where he heard Glenn... And we were going at it with Glenn as well as on that five by five. Oh, Marco. I'm sorry, Marco. There he goes. He's in the background. I think he's going to stop. That's their baby. They finally had their baby from uh, the last episode when uh, Peter was saying, well, technically, the three of us on this phone could get pregnant when it was him, Scott, and Glenn. And that's pretty quick because that was Monday, and now it's Saturday, and they already had the baby. Wow. Stop eventually. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> so uh, what Marco did... 
I gotta stop it. Hold on. There we go. I think I stopped it. So what Marco did was he said he tried to grab his calculator and do a three by three by three, and it is his. Tau Sigma, thank you. Marco, always ready. Peter and Mingles, never steady. Who will win? You decide. Bars, bars. Thank you for that, Tau Sigma. Appreciate you. Hysterical because he did three by three, and that gives you, what, nine, and then times three, and then he did times three. And his fingers were getting tired because he couldn't get past 14 million on his little calculator and kind of gave up, which is usually what happens when Marco realizes he's making an argument and being very stupid. So the whole concept of the five by five... With subscribers and views on the rise, Marco's channel reached record highs. Scott and Peter felt small. Their egos took a fall as jealousy clouded their eyes. Bars. By five by five is that it's never happened. It doesn't work that way. Anybody who's ever been in direct sales as like a sales manager or an MLM company or ran MLM software will realize it's never happened that way. And yeah, Joey K, you hit it right on the head. Joey says, I love this whole, I think, pretending to come up with a theory thing Peter does to try to sound like his adrenaline isn't pounding from being made fun of on the internet, straight up. And Scott, I sent you a, um, Boomer's gonna a boom. video uh, which was not directed towards MLM, but another great example of how people beyond, are hello. just academic. Okay, beyond, no more poetry. Here we go. They grumbled and groaned, feeling sore. For Marco's fame, they did a bore. But instead of competing, their friendship was fleeting as bitterness seeped to the core. I'm with it. Where's the bars? <laughs> bars. Idiots. <laughs> is when Ted Cruz was uh, talking to Mayorkas, who's the Homeland Security guy, you know, the one who's supposed to be in charge of the border. And when Ted Cruz said, do you know what these are? And he, ha he held up the wristbands that were colored, meaning different colors. Um, and Mayorkas didn't know what they were. And Ted Cruz says, are you kidding me? You're the border control guy, and you don't know what these are? Are you a f you're, you're incompetent. And the reason why the guy is incompetent is if you're the border guy, anybody on the Texas border, you could be a, you could be a resident, you could be a part of law enforcement, you could be a, a migrant. Everybody knows that those are the wristbands that are being put on people that are telling them how much they're going to owe the cartel. And if you're the border guy and you don't know that, like how can you not know that? It's on the news. It's in the streets. People around the areas. Everybody knows this. Like, everybody knows this. How the hell can you not know that? It's the same analogy with Marco. And an MLM. Like, how the hell can you not know? Shit, I was muted. Thank you, Will Martin. Appreciate you, bro. My bad. That no one has ever built five by five by five ever ever now in a forced matrix you know that's a different thing from the compensation plan but no one has ever recruited five who recruited five who recruited five so when you sit there and you push your buttons and robert fitzpatrick sits there and talks about this endless chain you're making yourselves look like idiots like you're buffoons you don't understand the way things work now Here's the other thing that they just don't get. And I think we might have gotten through to Glenn, but I'm not really sure. We'll find out next Monday when we talk to nope. him again. Is the idea that, Scott, you and I never agree. Or, I'm sorry. We, we agree that that is the wrong way to pitch an MLM. Like all of us have seen MLM math. You know, the guy who does the presentation who tells you that on your, you know, when you fill your 5 by 7 matrix, your income is going to be $987 million a month. I think that you you would say that's done wrong. Like that's not the way. That's the wrong way to explain it. I would say that's the wrong way to explain it. MLM math is what I call it. That whole concept of somebody explaining that is done wrong. 
So if it's done wrong, and I agree it's been done wrong, why in the world would you use that as an argument? It's never happened. I already before. explained it this. It doesn't ever happen. I want to go back to it's a common challenge with MLMers and then bring this back to some of the uh, MLMers um, that are also the anti-MLMers and kind of use that as a reference leading into my next point as well. So back to you. Yeah, Pierre, I wanted to give you a near live update on Marco's show tonight. So wow. Wow, bro. Dude. Hey, Louise Mack, bro. Dude. You're fucking Billions and billions. Nice, Dude, look at this. 20. A. Louise Mack has recruited 20 new members. A. Louise Mack has gifted 20 memberships. You guys, big up A. Louise Mack because that's like a $100 value, that 20 gifted. That's amazing. Wow. Thank you, A. Louise Mack. You are a fucking G. You are the GOAT. Dude, congrats to all the people who got memberships. Jules Kennedy, Anastasia, Rebecca, Emilio, KB, uh, Hopi Nay. Oh, you got a bingo, A. Louise Mack? Nice. Taylor Creedy. Uh, wow, this is so amazing. Thank you so fucking much. Daisy B, the bestest. Andrea Rinaldi, congrats. Texas Vapor, MP, Jasmine Yeager, and Sod. Wow, and Meredith. Oh, there's more. AG, Neens Girl, Spencer Watson, Manny Cisneros, Gabby B. Wow, 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 that's a lot of memberships. You're my dog. That's amazing, dude. Thank you so much. What the floop? Forgive my language, but what the floop is that about? Joey K says, Peter doing the 5 by 5 by 5 math is being generous. That's them giving you the perfect scenario and demonstrating how that will, even that will fail. Exactly. He's too stupid. Always stupid Peter. Doesn't get it. Pussy Peter mingles. By the way, somebody commented on my YouTube channel today and was like, uh, I hate that you use pussy as an insult, or I wish you would stop using pussy as an insult. And my first thought was, Pussy. <laughs> anyway, I blocked him. Fuck him. You're the go, A. Louise Mac. Peter be like, I don't understand logarithmic math because it doesn't happen, right? Amazing, outrageous, wow. Green chat for real, this is crazy, y'all. It's like I have members only mode on, but I don't. Shit, bagging up. Thumbs up the ting, you guys only need like 30, nah, 20 more likes. Until the amount of likes matches the amount of viewers. I love it. The cult is growing big and strong today. This is crazy. We've got like 35 new members today, dude. Insane. All right. Let's keep going. Let's get through this. He hasn't actually. Actually, I think he might be starting just as I'm speaking. Um, but apparently this Connor Banshee guy Woo! who um, is too afraid to come on our show. Congrats, Connor. Getting uh, shouted out on BFR. Show, even though Eliza did it, you know, as a young woman. This guy's such a wimp, he won't do it. Um, he said that, uh, let's see, let me go back and, and see, because I, I, I want to quote this because it's pretty good. <laughs> he, he said he said at 8-11, um, this is Connor Banshee, Eliza, they are hitting you hard in the show today. So apparently while he was waiting for Marcos, um, he was listening to our show live. Um, and then uh, she replied, to him, um, OMG, LOL, Connor, really, with three face emojis. And then um, the last message here from Connor was, all I got to say is Eliza, oh, wait a second. All I got to say, Eliza, is that Scott is a coward. Peter's not much better. Well, Connor's the coward because he's been invited on the show and he won't come. <laughs> He won't come on the show. <laughs> In fact, he said at one point, one of his comments, he said, when Scott shows his face, then I'll come on his show. Well, wait a second, Connor. You haven't shown your face either. And all we're trying to do is get you to come on a podcast. And you're too scared to do that. So, you know, it's just crazy how they. I like how he always tries to flip, flip the criticism of him not showing his face, which is total bitch shit. Show your face, bro. You know, they're stupid. I mean, who else would follow always stupid Marco? Um, Keyboard warrior. You know. Keyboard warrior. That's all they are. Exactly. You just yeah. learned the term. Just, just learned the term keyboard warrior. 
Exactly. They don't know what they're doing. So I wanted to give a real life example. I think I mentioned this before, but I wanted to point out, and, and Mark, you have to suspend the idea of recruiting for a second because you accuse us of not answering questions by changing the topic and, and diverting, but you do the same thing. Nope. Or actually you do it. We're, I don't. we're actually just trying to make an illustration, but you actually do divert the conversation. When we start an analogy to illustrate a concept, you go right to the recruiting thing. So just suspend your recruiting thoughts right now. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm a freshman in college, brand new Navy ROTC. They crammed us all into the upstairs classroom. There was, I don't know. Beyond, we need to add, uh, Scott mentions being in the Navy if it's not there. Because already have, we already have Scott talks about being six foot five. 50 or 60 of us up there. I mean, it was shoulder to shoulder. And, uh, and they told us. Um, look to your left, look to your right. Only one of you is going to be here at the end of four years. So I don't know. I don't remember who was at my left or right, but I, I did glance to the left and right. And in my head, I didn't say anything, but in my head, I said, I mean, I really feel sorry for you guys that are sitting next to me because I'm it, right? <laughs> I, I was determined <laughs> to finish the program even though That's I... That's a drop. I'm it. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. I'm it, right? <laughs> So up his own ass. What a fucking cock narcissist. Just started it. Let's and I'm keep sure going. there's plenty of others that had the same idea in their head. Um, you were talking to a future U.S. Army soldier. I love that. That's literally Scott. Um, and maybe they didn't finish. Um, some of them probably said, yeah, I probably don't belong here. And, and they were some of them that dropped out. But at the end of the four years, I think it was actually one out of four. I, I got to hear that again, bro. Others that had the same idea, and they, and in my head, I didn't say anything, but in my head, I said, I mean, I really feel sorry for you guys that are sitting next to me because I'm it, right? <laughs> I, I was determined to finish the program even though I just started so it. Fucking and I'm sure there was plenty of others that had the same idea in their head. Peace out, Aaron C. Appreciate you. Um, and maybe they didn't finish. Um, some of them probably said, yeah, I probably don't belong here. And, and they were some of them that dropped out. But at the end of the four years, I think it was actually one out of four instead of one out of three was left. Um, and, and that's just an illustration of when you start something, when a group of people starts something, they don't all finish. You know, Marco himself didn't finish college. Um, if, if the Navy had graduated all 50 years. I never even wanted to go to college in the first place to begin with. So, you know. Take that with a grain of salt. 60 of us that started, there wouldn't be any assignments for everybody, right? We would have flooded the, the Navy with just too many people and not enough. But Joey K. Scott be like, I was going to join Special Ops, but if the drill instructor got in my face, I'd drop his ass. So true. Positions to fill. So the Navy knows and everyone else knows, except for stupid Marco, that just because you have a certain number of people get Bro, Scott acts like he was Rambo. This guy never even shot a gun. He was in the fucking he was an engineer working with very hot water, as he said in the uh working on a ship with very hot water, as he said in a previous show. Well getting started, they're not gonna finish. And and so it is in MLM. The average distributor yeah, He was essentially um, a janitor. Can use a, a a figure that Marco put out there. I think it might be a little bit exaggerated, but it's, it's probably not too far off where he said, you know, this particular MLM started with 150,000 people at the beginning of a year, and then they recruited 50,000, and you would think at the end of the year, therefore, they would have 200,000, but in fact, they only had 150,000 because the 50,000, either probably mostly the new people quit. And I see. So he's going to make the comparison between the Navy and only a couple of you maggots will make it to MLM, the churn rate, which is so ridiculously high, at least 50% per year. And he's going to go ahead and say, oh, well, yeah, it's basically the same thing as with anything. So, Marco, you're just an idiot. You don't get it. Most people who go to university don't end up graduating or whatever percentage don't end up graduating. So you're an idiot, Marco. Also, some people who had been there for more than one year also quit, and they just stayed even as far as the overall... Yeah, uh, Heather, great point. His comparison from the Navy to Amway is, is what Glenn already debunked because he said, yeah, the Navy tells you up front you likely won't make it. And 
it, that's exactly what Scott admits to right here in this story. He says, my instructor or whatever told me to look to my left, look to my right, and recognize that one in four of us wouldn't be here. In MLM, they tell you, if I can do it, you can do it. It's easy. Just recruit three people. We're all number at the beginning versus the end of the year. So you could say that the average person in that illustration recruited one-third of a person, right? One-third of 150 is 50, and, and so the average person uh, – recruited one third of a person. I'm sure, you know, Mark was going to have a good time with that little figure. Um, but the median person probably sponsored zero because, you know, it, it was probably only a few people that sponsored a lot of people. And the, and the person in the middle between the, you know, the zero and the 50,000, the 25,000 mark probably didn't sponsor anybody. Cause my experience in Amway was, you know, the people that join, about two thirds or three quarters of them, really quit when they get started. They don't do anything, or they do very, very little. You know, they, they bought their starter pack. Maybe they went to one meeting. Maybe they made one order of some products, but then that was what it. up, e lazy. So basically, nothing, uh, nothing of consequence for sure. Um, and that's what we're talking about here. So when when you have that five by five by five. No, it's not what we're talking about here, you fucking monkey. We're talking about people's expectations versus what actually happens. And the expect and th that's what makes it a scam. Do I need to literally scam? Whoops. Scam definition. A dishonest scheme, a fraud. A guy that scams the elderly out of their savings. Okay, let's see what the definition of fraud is. Fraud definition. Wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain. Hmm. Sort of like telling people all you need to do is pay me $500 and then recruit three other people who pay $500 and then you'll be rich. That is a lie which enriches the person who said it. Oh, so we're not actually talking about the comparisons between Amway and the Navy. We're talking about scamming. We're talking about what people are led to believe versus what is actually true. But of course, always stupid Scott and always stupid Peter don't get it. So what can you do? By five? Well, first of all, it's almost impossible for one person to sponsor five people because it's hard to spot. Hey, peace out, A. Louise Mack. Thank you so much again for gifting all those memberships. That was really amazing. You didn't have to do that. So thank you so much. To one person, let alone five. And then if by some miracle you find some hard charger that can sponsor five people, guess what? Now you're expecting every single one of those five to sponsor five with, with the illustration I just gave about. Oh, yeah. Scott never answered if it was him in the shirt. I, that, I, I'm going to take that as a yes. You know, people dropping out. There's, it's impossible. It, it, what's interesting is Marco tries to turn that into an argument that it, it's a scam because it cannot come true. Be, yeah. Because you can't do five by five by five. That's what makes it a scam because that's how it's presented. And, and I mentioned this on the last show too. It's presented in such a way to illustrate how the money works. You know, if you have this, for example, in Amway. You know, it's a, it's a stair step breakaway plan. There's all kinds of other ones. There's, you know, there's the Australian matrix. There's, you know, binary. There's all kinds of, of different models, but Amway's is a stair step breakaway. Um, and, and the way. What he's talking about here is the different sort of compensation plans, basically the way that the, the downlines are structured. In a binary plan, there's person A, and then you're allowed to have person. B and C on either side of you, but that's the extent of it. You can't have, uh, like those would be your two direct recruits. So you can only have two, and those, are, those form your two legs, so binary, right? And then person B and person C are allowed to recruit respectively into their left and right legs, person D, E, and person F and G, and then, and on and on and on. The problem with this, and by the way, little spoiler teaser for the next stream I'm gonna do is, I have a stream, I'm going to do a stream reacting to this channel, and it is absolutely stunning, this channel that I found. I'm so glad it came up. It is called MLM for CEOs, okay? It has a 1,000 subscribers, 
This is the channel. I'm going to show it to you here in a moment. This is the channel. It looks like this. It's called MLM for CEOs. And it has it started uploading three years ago. But as you can see, very few views. This guy in the video, I don't know who he is. He churns these videos out, like churns them out. And uh, he does live streams as well. And it's absolutely stunning. So check this out. He has videos explaining the different models. You can see in the thumbnails there sort of the different shapes of them, right? The binary plan, that's what I described. The uni-level plan, the forced matrix. This is what Scott and Peter are talking about right now. The mono-leg plan. Can you see this? The mono-leg plan. Um, the board plan. So I, I just find it, the two-up plan. I find this so fascinating because this guy in each of these videos is going through and explaining the different models and the upsides and the downsides of using each of them if you were in an MLM or the, like this channel is about advice for starting and running an MLM company. And it was just so mind boggling to watch this guy over and over describe a pyramid scheme recruiting endless chain and try to go, well, you know, this one is good because it has this and that feature and this one is good because as though he was talking about a legitimate business. And yet, with all of these different plans, whether it's the forced matrix or the binary plan or the two-up plan or the mono-leg plan or the unilevel plan, all of them have one thing in common. They're an endless chain where you are getting paid to recruit, incentivized to recruit, whether there's a product or not. So every example that he gives is a pyramid scheme. Whether you had five direct people, like the five by five, right? Whether I recruited five, and told those five to go recruit five, or I recruited two and told those two to recruit two, like the binary plan, it's all the same thing. It's all an endless chain. It doesn't really matter how you structure it. If you're incentivizing people to recruit, that's a pyramid scheme, full stop. So we're going to react to this channel on the next stream, and I am going to share with you his videos where he explains the differences in each. And I hope by the end of that stream, you will get a, a an idea of how absolutely sinister and delusional the people that advocate on behalf of this industry are. This is a, like an old man with white hair explaining how MLM in different incarnations is supposedly a good business. Here's this video, one of his most viewed videos, taking a look at how compensation plans work and how to design one, not designed as a way to just pay out money. Uh, we're not gonna go through this today, but I mean, dude, we are absolutely gonna look at this. And uh, wow, this is a big, this is a video we definitely gotta watch. I mean, absolute madness. So we're definitely gonna watch this. And uh, anyways, let's get back to Scott and Peter. but. Scott is sort of going on this tangent right now about oh, forced matrix and this and that. It doesn't matter. The whole point of the five by five example was to show that whether it's a two by two or a three by three or a five by five, it's an endless chain that is mathematically impossible to see out. Okay. That's the point. Works. You want to be able to show people if you have this many legs and this much volume in each leg, this is how much money you'll make. You want to show people how the money is made and how much money is Also, made. yes, I wish I had said this last stream. Uh, Kirsten says it here in the chat, and somebody said it in the comments of the last stream. They, this did happen. Taking, taking the recruit, you know, you recruit people who recruit people who recruit people, taking that to the extreme did result it did play out on a grand scale in Albania in the 90s. And guess what? The entire country, the entire country's economy collapsed and it led to a civil war. Everyone was in the pyramid scheme. Search it up on YouTube. There's great videos about it. It's made. That's the whole idea. It's not that it's going to happen in a, in a perfectly balanced way. You know, the five by five by five. That's not the purpose of those numbers. It's just to illustrate if you have this many. Happy birthday, Joseph.
many people in this many legs, this is how much money you make. That's all it's about. And and the anti MLM Huns, including Marco, um, get that wrong. They don't understand that that's just an illustration of how the money is being made. Um, but he's always stupid, so you know we we have to keep pounding this into his little tiny brain until he gets it, and some of his goons might get it. So um, anyway, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there, Peter, to to show just how stupid he is. Because you know when the FTC brought this argument to the um, Jeromar case, which again, we'd mentioned this in the last show, Marco obviously did not listen to it, um, that the FTC was actually making the argument that it could happen. And the judge didn't just reject that. He, he was poking fun of the FTC. He was giving them a hard time. He was, he was being, you know, he, he was applying humor to it and insulting them. Really. He was basically telling the FTC lawyers, you guys are really stupid to bring that theory into my court. That's basically what he was saying without saying those exact words. Um, but now the anti-ML... Crazy. And Pass says, my great-grandmother had to flee to Greece to get away from the MLM civil war. Insane. MLMers try to turn it on its head and say, well, it's because you can't do that. That's what makes it a scam. <laughs> so... <laughs> Both arguments are stupid. Um, they're probably equally stupid in my mind because the whole thing. All right. Well, Scott and Peter, if you wanted to see it play out, you know, you could just look at the case study of, of Albania and see what happens when it actually does play out on a large scale. It leads to nothing but cataclysmic damage and losses. It, it's, it's just not even real. You know, in fact, the judge even said, you know, we don't live in a fantasy land, and that's where these anti MLMers are. And that's where the FTC was, quite frankly, with the Jerome Omar case. And they tried the argument again during the Amway lawsuit in 1979, and the FTC judge there, you know, an administrative law judge, he was a little bit kinder. He didn't, you know, really tear him apart. He just said, no, I, I don't buy that. And I don't believe that the FTC has ever tried that argument since. It's only those two times that I'm aware of. Um, and they really haven't tried it since. And yet we have, like you say, uh, Robert Fitzpatrick, we got Marco, we got a bunch of anti MLMers that keep beating this drum that has been proven both by logic and in the legal court system as being not meaningful. It, it's, it's totally wrong. It's totally stupid. Um, but that's why Marco does it because he's always stupid. So that's the way it goes. Um, and I'll, I'll give it back to you for any other comments. Perfect. Okay, good. So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of weave in one thing relative to some of the anti MLMers as well. So Marco, see if you can get this story straight, because again, you never know how to tell the story the right way. You always have to kind of manipulate it your way. And I'm going to kind of blend in some people that, you know, when there was a, the uh, MLM I By the way, Scott made an uh, important point, which also Robert talks about in Ponzinomics. An administrative law judge, not a Supreme Court judge, not like a federal judge, an administrative law judge, Judge Timoney to be exact, is the one who signed off on the Amway rules, which Amway created, and it is to this day the status quo for uh, the legal precedent by which every MLM must operate and which every MLM does operate. And I've talked about this before. I talked about this on um, the True Crime with Matt Cox podcast that I was on a few months ago. I talked about how there is sort of a, even the industry of MLM is sort of a pyramid scheme in itself, a pyramid scheme of pyramid schemes. There was so this is the very, very shortened history. Van Andel and DeVos joined a company called Neutralite as distributors. This was the first MLM that used the recruitment model, okay? Van Andel and DeVos broke off from Neutralite and started Amway. Since then, virtually every MLM has either been a breakaway from Amway, where somebody takes their downline and moves over and starts a new MLM, which is a branch off of Amway, or somebody branches off of Amway, 
and joins an MLM where the CEO started in Amway. And then someone in that company, who's the distributor, branches off of that company. And so if you really, if you were to like draw it out, it would look basically the same as the recruitment model of any individual company. You recruit someone, they recruit two people, you recruit three people, whatever. The industry itself and the number of MLM companies are sort of shaped the same way with Amway being at the very top and every other one breaking away. I'm working on this Primerica documentary right now. In the CEO of Pri in the founder of Primerica's memoir, he writes that he got the idea for Primerica's business model from being in Amway. So, uh, anyways, Scott, you're stupid. IA stands for the Multi-Level Marketing International Association. When they were thinking about rekindling some of the things that they were doing, they changed their name to the SNA, Social Networking Association. Or, no, yeah, Social Networking Association, SNA. <clears throat> and they were going to be talking about a lot of social media stuff, you know, Facebook, Instagram, things like that. And uh, I said, you know, I don't do prospecting like that because I, I think, you know, a lot of the people that prospect on Facebook, it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's bad. I mean, they, they do stupid stuff. And I said, I don't want to have anything to do with that. That's not the way we do the lead generation stuff anyway. And I think it's just bad for the industry. Oh, and by the way, I'll show you this. If you search Neutralite on Google, the first thing that comes up is Amway.com, Neutralite Vitamins and Supplements. So they're still keeping it alive. It's sort of a throwback. Basically, Van Andel and DeVos, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of reminiscent of the, uh, if you've seen the movie The Founder with Michael Keaton about McDonald's and how McDonald's came to be, similar where uh, they started Amway and Amway became such a success that they bought Neutralite. So they still have Neutralite products here, which is crazy. This was the first, I can't believe this exists, the first MLM ever, Neutralite. And it is now just uh, a part of Amway. So crazy. Wow. 1934. Almost 100 years we've been doing this. Almost 100 years of MLM and still it's going on. Don't talk to me about Bernie Madoff 30 years Ponzi scheme. It, it is nothing. It is not even comparable. It is not even comparable to MLM. Look, Neutralite, Wikipedia. Mineral, vitamin, and dietary supplements developed in 1934 by Carl Renborg. Please, 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 please go buy Ponzinomics. Please go buy Ponzinomics. It talks about the entire history of Carl Renborg, Neutralite, Amway. It's called Ponzinomics, the untold story of multi-level marketing. You have to listen to it. You have to read it. I'm serious. If you like this content, you will like my content 12 billion times more. If you listen to Ponzinomics, you will understand to a level that will like a level that will actually like, I don't even know how to like the, the existential dread you will feel from learning about the actual history of MLM will change you. I promise you it will change you. Yeah. The founders of Amway, Jay Van Andel and Richard DeVos, began as independent distributors in Neutralite in 1949. At a time when the pre product's previous distributors, Meitinger and Castleberry, Robert talks about them in the book too, were involved in a dispute with the US FDA, which accused them of false advertising. Van Andel and DeVos rose rapidly, becoming top-selling distributors. Concerned about the FDA dispute, they launched the new company, The American Way, later known as Amway, to use the MLM system for other household products. The dispute, which went to the United States Supreme Court, was resolved in favor of the FDA, meaning Neutralite lost the case. And then in 1972, Amway bought a controlling interest in the company, and in 94, they took over complete ownership. I mean... It's really... Yeah, just, just the greatest scam in, in in human history it's free for a lot of people and they just make buffoons of themselves because they don't know what they're doing but i said i okay i gotta kind of learn some of the things that they're doing so i'm sorry last note on that in true mlm fashion of every mlm since the top distributors van andel and devos 
They saw the company was in hot water, so they jumped ship, started their own thing, and that was that. On YouTube, and I typed in anti-MLM, and I ran across some um, uh, com- uh, uh, common, uh, popular, popular is a better word, popular people. One of them was Kiki Chanel, um, and she was a gal that was um, not, she used to be anti-MLM, but she's not so much anymore. And I said, okay, this gal's a young gal. Um, she's doing makeup. Like, what the hell? She's a, a gal doing makeup and talking about MLM at the same time. I said, I, I guess. I mean, is this what these people do? I'm mean, Like, this is not my thing, but this is what these people do. And by the way, I have a daughter and I have a wife and, you know, a granddaughter. And um, some of the girls that I know are into makeup. So I'm like, okay, I guess this is what they do. So I'm like, okay. And one of the gals that I saw was a gal named Savannah Marie. And Savannah Marie... I said, oh, wow, she, wow, this gal does makeup. Like, geez, I've met, she starts off and then she's done. I'm like, wow, this gal's good. And I was listening to her stories, and she was, um, now this is way back when, way back when. And part of the challenges I have is that some of them start off the way they are, and then they end up a little bit on the weird side. So I said, ah, oh, this Savannah Marie gal, she doesn't know a lot about MLM. This is way back then. She's smarter now than she is now. Um, and unlike Savvy, you know, we've, got, we've had our thing with Savvy, and we'll talk about that on, on another show. But um, so Savannah Marie's there sitting there doing her makeup. And as I'm watching her a little bit, and she's talking about some of the things she's doing, I'm learning about her story because these people tell their story as if, like, they're all friends. I'm like, I'm kind of peeking in on this, I guess. Like, she's talking to a group of people as if her, she's her friends. And what I found out about Savannah Marie is she was teased as a kid. And um, she... When she was growing up, and by the way, I'm, I'm not doing anything other than just kind of stating the facts uh, with no judgment, but I was kind of intrigued because I wanted to learn the, the mentality behind these people. <clears throat> so she was teased as a kid because she didn't have any eyebrows or facial hair. And as a young girl, she was teased a lot. Now, she became a pretty girl. I mean, especially with makeup. She became a pretty girl. And I don't know if that's, if I'm allowed to say that and people would make fun of that but she's a pretty girl um and now she's a mom but Jesus. she was a pretty girl back then and there was even one video where she shaved her head and you know like she did it online so she shaves her head and scott i even mentioned it to you i said this this gal i mean she's been through some trauma relative to what the stuff that she's been going on and um you know why she's so anti-mlm you know it'd be nice if she got her arguments right um because she's <laughs> you know she's smart and then there was another one her name is uh, C.C. Suarez. I think you told me about her. I started watching her as well. Same thing. Pretty girl, oh, yeah, doing makeup. And I'm like, okay, I guess oh, that's what they do. Women. And C.C.'s gone through a whole bunch of changes. And I have to share with you, I don't agree with a lot of the things she says. She does a lot of things for entertainment value as well, I'm sure. But one of the things that I noticed about C.C., is, or her, her name is Chelsea, is that she um, had had many miscarriages. So uh, recently, she uh, became pregnant, and it's and it's stuck. I, I, don't know, I don't know if that's the right verb to use, but, like, she's seven months pregnant now. I mean, that girl is just glowing. I mean, that's like, she is so happy that she is pregnant. What the fuck and are you I, getting I, I don't on know about, her, bro? Um, but, like, I'm like, geez, I'm happy she's pregnant, too. Look, she's, her husband's a cop, seems like a nice guy. She talks about him as a nice guy. A lot of her arguments are flawed uh, relative to MLM. She's got it out for the way people do stuff or whatever, more like wash women than anything else. I'm sure a lot of people will attack that statement. But these are the people that I was studying as I was learning about this stuff as far as people being YouTubers on MLM. Well, CC recently, and this is a little bit of a tip for Marco. So I'm going to get to that in a second. Let's get to it. But <clears throat> I'm going to come back to CC in a second. One of the things I saw about Marco was Marco was kind of like, and I, I referenced it a little bit earlier in my monologue about Marco, how we're watching him just die on his channel. Now, his subscribers have gone up, but <clears throat> Marco, I know you suck at math, so I'm helping you with this a little bit. But uh, Marco has 60,000 subscribers. <laughs> and on the last video that he did, so this is the most recent video that he did, he collected $70, Scott. Now, this is... Um, $70. Marco, let's talk about fucked up math. Wait, are you talking about a live stream? So $70 divided by your 60,000 
subscribers gives you a total of these are in dollars, Marco. Point zero zero one one six seven per subscriber. Marco, point zero zero. Most people would consider that just about nothing. But I figured, Scott, let me continue to do the math so Marco can see that his channel is dead. Seventy. What are you talking about, bro? In Canadian is. Um, Seventy dollars in donations before the AdSense kicks in, before the memberships kick in, before the new patrons kick in. No problem. What are you talking about? You realize? Well, I guess you wouldn't realize this, Peter, because you guys have zero fans. But when you have a certain amount of subscribers, like in my case, sixty thousand, not every single person watches every single video. Like a lot of my audience is in a time zone that they're asleep by the time I stream. My streams are not very friendly for the people who live in the UK, Australia, the Middle East, etc. So th th right there, my live audience, uh, the potential for the amount of people that could be watching live is greatly diminished just based off that alone. But also, you're talking about like supplemental income, like extra money that people donated. <laughs> you know? What about when I did a GoFundMe? And I got twenty thousand dollars. That you know, are you, are you not going to count that? And I only had I don't know forty thousand subscribers at that time. So that's like fifty cents per subscriber. <laughs> Just so ridiculous, you know, so ridiculous. Fifty one dollars in U.S. and fifty one dollars in U.S. Um, is roughly. Let's see. After he pays his taxes is about $35 for him. So Marco, I don't know, and I hate to say it, Scott, when I was doing the math, I gave him the benefit of the doubt as if he, he gets all the math from the donos, but YouTube takes out a pretty good chunk. I think it's like 30%. So Marco made like $35 on your last video. Well, maybe that was an anomaly. And by the way, there was a 4,300. Doesn't know how YouTube works. All good. 300 viewers and 401 likes. All of you guys can go check this out on his YouTube channel. Well, the one before that, and we're talking about the month of May, was uh, Marco got like $47. Where was he going? Where is he going with, like, is he going to tie this to the previous stuff he was saying about the women creators or no? I'm not even going to do the math as far as, like, Canadian versus U.S. You're good at that. Minus the fees that YouTube takes out. Minus the taxes eventually that will be due. But he also had like 331 likes. Then on the one before that, that was a big one. That was one that he went after me big time. 120 bucks, so I'm good for Marco's bank. So uh, 120 bucks, and uh, that was 4.3 uh, on the viewers as far as 1,000. And uh, that was his WFG What are you one, talking about, bro? Where he kind of went over us and WFG at the same time. 358 likes. Then his fan first one, $95. <laughs> an anomaly. Yeah, he had an anomaly. Dollars, Marco. Big time. And uh, it took you four hours to do that one. I'm not really sure about the math on that one after you're done with the U.S. dollar transactions and the minus the YouTube and the minus the whatever. No wonder you can't do any more multi-level miseries, Marco. You can't afford a video. Imagine losing a million dollars in direct selling and making fun of Marco making money. Yeah, even, even if I did make 0 0.03 or whatever that you calculated, it's more than MLM money. Editor guy. I didn't hire and fire myself three times from YouTube. I'll tell you that much. Guy. And then there was another one just before that, $105. And I kind of did the math on it, Marco. And for the whole month of May, so far, so like mid-month, $437. You know, convert that to U.S. because we're familiar with that. Most of your listeners are going to be U.S. listeners. $322 after taxes, Marco, probably $225, which is roughly giving you the benefit of the doubt, not even taking out the YouTube discounts, probably about 100 bucks a week. So that's why I say, Scott, you know, pretty soon he's either doing drugs again, selling drugs again, going bankrupt. <laughs> These guys are infuriating. Here is another 70 after YouTube takes 30. With love from a math teacher. <laughs> oh, boy.
fuck? Anna Marie fella, I'm laughing because I just know they're so pissed. There, there's a week of my income, apparently, uh, t according to Scott, or according to Peter, sorry. Thank you so much, Anna Marie fella. Really appreciate you're you. You're poor, fucking poor. For real. I don't know why I instinctively pressed that you were broke. You're fucking poor when someone donates. It's so fucking rude, but I don't know. I think it's funny. <laughs> Thank you, Anna Marie. Really appreciate you. These guys are infuriating. Here's another 70 after YouTube takes 30. With love from a math teacher. LOL, Peter. I need, the, I need a clip of Peter going, I didn't even do the math. For sure. Yeah. Insane. Insane. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing, but he's certainly not making any money. And I'm just willing to Love you too, contribute to that by distracting him and making sure that he's spending all of his time playing us, talking about him and bantering back and forth. This is crazy. I remember when I used to stream with my friend Philip on his YouTube channel before I even started mine. This is like 2018. And, uh, oh, you need an Obama? I got you. Obama! And, uh, w w the craziest conspiracy theory that I heard somebody say on, like, Reddit about Philip was that they had this conspiracy theory that Philip paid people to donate. If that doesn't, s if that sounds like it doesn't make sense, let me explain. They had a theory that Philip. Sheila, welcome to the cult. Thank you so much. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Happy birthday, Corrosive Springs. They had a theory that Philip was paying people, like, secretly, under the table, before the stream, giving them, let's say, $100, so that they would watch the stream while it was live and then donate $100 through the Super Chat to give the, uh, to give the appearance that lots of people were donating, but really it was just him giving himself money through other people. Never mind the fact that YouTube Super Chat takes 30%. So if this was true that he was doing this and he was giving people $100 in order for them to donate back $100, he was really losing $30 on every transaction. This is how insane some people are. And I don't know, Peter's rant here just reminds me of that. <laughs> well, he's probably going to get a knock on the door from a landlord that's going to kick him out of his, oh, and by the way, Never take financial advice or business advice. Eliza Gray says, does Streamlabs take anything or just a small percentage? It takes a small percentage. So my e-transfer is always MarcoMGMT at gmail.com. Same as my email. So if, if for you Americans that don't know what e-transfer is, in Canada, we don't have PayPal and – sorry, we don't have Cash App and Zelle and all this shit. We have PayPal, but we have e-transfer. E-transfer is exactly what it sounds like. You put in someone's email into your like banking app and how much money you want to send them and it takes the money from your checking account and puts it in their checking account instantly. There's no fee, there's no middleman, nothing. Wow. Scott and Peter are so pissed right now. You're broke! You're fucking poor! Remember Mark? You know everything, remember? <laughs> Do you like me? <laughs> Yeehaw, you know it's bull wrangling time. Let's go. Thank you so much, Sheila M. Wow, bro, what a night. M Dub, S G E Z, Elazy, Bell Orr, uh, Katie, Prutton, Rachel Alexandria, all you guys got gifted memberships. Amazing. Peace out, Beyond. Appreciate you being here. Damn. Let's flippin' go. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. Scott and Peter punching the air right now. So true. Play the Boosie clip. I got you, bro. Where's the Boosie audio sound effect here? Um, Boosie. Put your pussy lips on live. I'll give you $1,000. Love it. <laughs> E-transfer sounds like voodoo. I know. Well, to you guys in the U.S., everybody fucking has to take a little piece of everything. Everybody's got to get their grubby little fingers on your money before somebody else can have it. It's disgusting. But, uh, yeah, we really grew the cult this year, uh, this, tonight, not even this year, this stream. A lot of memberships being gifted. I love it. Love to see it, you guys. Marco maxing out his entire year's salary right now. So true. Yeah. E-transfer is the best. I think, Zell, you have fees and shit, right? All right. Here we go. Ice. From a guy that lives in a one-bedroom apartment. <laughs> like a one bedroom apartment. Oh, at 20 my bingo sheet doesn't have. Uh, they mentioned Marco's apartment 
on this one. He's seven, 28 years old, Marco. As much shit as you talk financial advice or business advice from a guy that lives in a one-bedroom apartment, like a one-bedroom apartment at 27, 28 years old, Marco, as much shit as you talk, a one-bedroom apartment talking about financial advice. And who the hell knows when the <laughs> last time you had a girlfriend. But that's been a while back as well. But I have some hope, Scott. I told you I'd come <laughs> back. On CC Suarez's, one of her last videos. There you go. She gave me an idea for Marco. <clears throat> oh, um, the idea for, I'm going to come back to one other topic. But the idea for Marco was this. CC pulled some sponsors. So one of the sponsors she pulled, Marco, was a vibrator company. And I thought that was kind of weird. Kind of creepy, too. Feeling sorry for always poor Marco. Oh, thank you, Johnny. You're poor! You're fucking poor! Come on, Marco. Fuck him. Thank you for that, Johnny. For real, I appreciate you. Wow. Yeah, I like how they're making fun of my one-bedroom apartment when it's like, well, you said it. I don't have a girlfriend. Why do I need? I don't need more room. I'm chilling. Why would I need? Would you want me to go get a bigger house just to <laughs> impress you, Peter? I'm good, dog. Uh, insane. So I turned that one off. It's kind of like a girl talking about a vibrator. As, as far as the sponsorship, and she's a mom, seven months pregnant. I'm not sure what Tony thinks about this. Her poor husband. Are you really going to do that one? On the vi what? I'm not sure. This what do you mean her poor husband? She getting getting money to promote a vibrator? It's not like she's doing only. It's not like she's using it on camera and putting it out there. The fuck? What are you talking about, bro? You might be able to afford Starbucks. Well, maybe Cheers Eliza. Enjoy. Maybe. Come on, you're fucking poor. Thank you, Eliza. Appreciate that. <laughs> kind of creepy. But anyway, I guess they're all okay with that stuff. You know those whole LGBTQ. Whatever the rest oh, of the alphabet is, I guess that's what they do. So the r reality, wow. Marco, is CC pulled wow. up a sponsor. With Another the bingo. Dude, we almost filled up the whole sheet tonight. I have three bingos. Horizontal, vertical, and uh, is there a diagonal? No. Okay, so two bingos. Insane. Wow. Killing it. Uh-oh. I thought that was kind of weird. Kind of creepy, too. Me when I saw Peter within 100 <laughs> yards of a preschool. <laughs> wow. Balls. Thank you. I really appreciate that. You guys are going in tonight. For real. Insane. Quite insanity. Thank you for that. Man. You guys are something else. You guys are something else. Thank you. Uh, Barbaros Dentiach. Really appreciate that. Oh, that's, that's my boy, Joey K. Appreciate you, Joey K. Fuck. You really can't make this shit up. All right, let's continue here. Um, vibrator. You know where I'm going with this, Marco. You know where I'm going. So push no, pause. You know where I'm going. Flashlight. No, I don't. So, Scott, I think, he, I think we can recommend some flashlight manufacturers to Marco oh, yeah. because he is a proud user. Certainly you're not going to worry about the... Endorsing a product you've never used a lot of Rachel says this shit gets sad, more sad every time. <laughs> yeah, no shit. <laughs> Don't lie, Peter. You use the affiliate link. Okay, this is where he was going with it with uh, a video I did last year about buying a fleshlight. Yeah, so, you got me. You got me, Peter. Good one. A lot of times, Marco. So, Scott, I think as a uh, sponsor idea for Marco, I think just imagining uh, Peter watching like. Savannah Marie and CC Suarez just makes me chuckle. Just imagining this old guy sitting there watching me. Like, oh. <laughs> so fucking funny. What up, Sam? Here. I think we should find a flesh light manufacturer so Marco could proudly get an affiliate link because I'm sure his Ponzi-nomics affiliate link for Robert Fitzpatrick isn't pulling in the necessary amounts. I haven't me. checked, actually. Oh, and by the way, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure, Scott, I saw him... He bought a cowboy hat. So if you take a look at the cowboy yes. hat and then you reduce that by the amount of money that he's been making so far, I suspect that the pressure, here's my guess, the pressure that his goons put on him to buy a cowboy hat made him buy a cowboy hat. But I'm pretty sure, Scott, nor Marco, 
he's probably going to return the cowboy hat because he can't nope. afford the cowboy hat based on the uh, revenue he's been making recently for the month of May. So, Yeah, I mean, it's one rejection, Marco. What could it cost you? A lifetime stalker, apparently, from two old geriatrics, nonetheless. Crazy, right? Me, telling, me denying to go on, a, on this radio show three years ago has led to three years of this. Insane. Oh, Marco, unless you have a huge turnaround and you're not sued, um, you're done. I mean, you're like done. We're just enjoying watching. Your also, yeah, we're going to fuck with Marco by helping him to get a new sponsor. Make it make sense. Your demise. So back to you, Scott. Yeah, just one comment. You know, you said he makes maybe 50 bucks a month before taxes and then 35. <laughs> well, he probably doesn't pay the taxes because we knew we That's know true. that the Canadian government came after him a year or so ago because he didn't pay his taxes <laughs> or he cheated on his taxes. Um, we don't know all the details, but we, we know that he ended up owing the Canadian government $10,000. So he just moved it over to his uh, credit card. You know, then he was shocked right. that, gee, there's a lot of interest being charged on this credit card. Um, and by the way, tonight, because I'm looking at the uh, his show tonight. Dave Vaughn, Peter's inflections when he's excited slash raging always get me. Me too. You know where I'm going with this, Marco? <laughs> we should get you a vibrator. He's so live, funny. Which is entitled, by the way, The Legend of Glenn. <laughs> That's my stream tonight. This is them. This is right before I went live. Uh, they were still live, but I had my stream that we're watching right now scheduled, and they saw that it was titled The Legend of Glenn. So this is very current. Because <laughs> he's so enamored with Glenn now, because um, Glenn paid him some compliments on the uh, show Monday that he played Wednesday. And by the way, he didn't do a show Friday, so you know maybe he took that time to return the hat. I don't know. He hasn't worn it. He hasn't worn he's so struggling for money that he skipped the stream. Imagine. Or tonight, so your your theory that he returned is is solid right now until he I'm pulls pretty, it out. I'm so. pretty sure. I, I think I saw a tag. Like I think on the last video. Yeah, you could be a millionaire, and they'd say you'd be homeless in a few months, straight up. Or if I was a millionaire, they would say that just goes to show you all the stupid people out there supporting this guy. They're all drug drug addicts, and he's selling drugs. Well, that's how he made the riches, don't you know? He was selling cocaine. I'm pretty sure I saw a tag. Like when he was moving back and forth, I saw the tag on the hat. So he had all intents of returning the hat, I am oh, sure. Oh, the string. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he's always stupid. Anyway, I mean, that's one thing you can count on with Marco is he's going to be stupid. Um, yep. But, yeah, that, those were great comments. And, uh, you know, it's, it's just amazing how stupid one guy can be uh -huh. and keep doing it over and over again. Oh, but, hey, it's always stupid Marco the narco. So, and, and uh, by the way, so – to, to circle back, like Savannah Marie and uh, CC Suarez and some of the other people that are the anti-MLMers, I mean, they make some valid points. They do some good research. You know, they, they have their audience that they cater to and stuff like that. But I'm not going to pick on them. Like, there's no way in the world. They, you know, I'm just not going to do that. That's why we have so much fun with Marcus. Some people might wonder, why do you pick on this one guy? Is because the arguments that maybe we might state relative to some other people, we don't need to. Because Marco's so friggin' stupid. We could just pick on Marco all the time. So back to you, Scott. Yeah, he uses the same arguments that a lot of the other anti-MLM Huns do. So we can stay focused on him because he was a jerk towards us. So, you know, he gets some fire in return. And, um, you know, that way we don't have to directly criticize those others because we know that if anyone watches their videos, they'll see that they have the same arguments that, Marco has actually Marco has the same arguments that they have because he doesn't have a any original thought he just watches the others and then copies them so it's really him copying the other anti MLM people uh, the other Huns um, versus him coming up with anything new because he, he has nothing new in his head it's all regurgitated from somewhere um, and it's not regurgitated from us because he's talking about all those weird things and and that's you know that's always Marco. So, <laughs> did, did you have anything else? Um, no, I, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Dave Vaughn to make us a chart. <clears throat> like Marco has our bingo chart. <clears throat> maybe we maybe we need bingo. Dave Vaughn. I think we're going to make a Marco income chart. Ooh. And I bet you. Ooh, that that's right? good. Dave Vaughn, are you ready to commit to that? To making them an Excel sheet where they can plug in uh, every 
every stream they can plug in, they can calculate the math on the amount of donos I got and plug in how much I made each stream since I, since I supposedly only make a hundred dollars a week. And that's my, that's my full income for the month. Predict Scott, even though our radio show is going on at the same time his radio show is, he's, we're probably going to help him raise. <laughs> and Paz with a great impression of Scott in the chat. So anyways, he's always stupid and you know, it's incredible how stupid he can be. He's always stupid, but again, He's always stupid, Peter. So yeah, always stupid, Mark. <laughs> Look, raise some money. So we're good for Marco. Like there's some people there who'll probably say, Marco, I feel so bad for you. Marco, I don't want you to have to sell flashlights. Marco, you know, uh, stop jerking off. Marco, stop asking people to see your wiener. You know, maybe if we give you some money, you don't have to do those things. So I'm sure he's gonna have a good yeah. dono. He's gonna get some bag. He's gonna get the bag. So having said that, and. Uh, I just didn't, I I just had to kind of compile a couple of things, Scott, because we're going to go after him again on Monday when Glenn comes back, because we're going to be able to talk about that stuff relative to Glenn. And Glenn had asked us to to to, to uh, debate Marco specifically, and I thought about it, and then I just had to remind myself, you know, the guy's retarded. The man is retarded. Like you cannot have a conversation with somebody who is a pathological liar, doesn't know how to tell the truth. And um, why bother? Because he's just, he, he just not going to, it's not going to make any sense. So we'll debate the arguments, but not debate the person because he's an idiot. So back to you, Scott. Yeah, and just to give you an update on his channel tonight, he has a thundering 150 people watching him right now. And this is after not doing a show last night. Usually he does Monday or excuse me, Wednesday. Oh, right. They were still live when I started. So, okay. Makes sense. Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. But this week he didn't have a Friday show. Um, we don't know why. He may have talked about it on this show. Probably not. He usually does not talk about why he skipped the show, uh, which he normally does not do because he needs the bag so badly. So he's got In my Discord, I actually said the reason was because I was spending time with family, something you guys, Scott and Peter, apparently don't do because you're always doing this fucking show. <laughs> He's got 155 watching and 103 thumbs up. And he's got at least one thumbs down because I thumbs down every video that he does. <laughs> wow. Why would you dox yourself as being such a fucking loser? I thumbs down every video. It, of course you do. And of course, you know, we know that YouTube doesn't show the number of thumbs downs anymore um, because ever, ever since, I think it was something related politically, um, when when some you know liberal well, the, position person yeah, the, excuse you, that, the excuse that they made was that it was uh, it was a, it was hurtful to people that some people might get their feelings hurt if there were thumb downs but the reality was is that when uh, Biden was doing whatever he was doing or the CDC was doing whatever they were doing or Anthony Fauci was doing whatever he was doing the overwhelming ratio of likes to dislikes was huge on the dislikes so they had to stop it because it was so unpopular. They talk about vaccines, they'd be bombarded. It would be like 10 to one dislikes to one like, and it was just retarded. So they had to stop. They literally had to stop. So they, they made up their own excuse, but the reality was for political reasons, they couldn't stand it. So that's good for Marco because Marco's so stupid. He's like, I don't understand. There's uh, 200 people watching and only 101 likes. Great point, Andrew. Why bother with debating Marco when you can transform your radio show into a perpetual commercial for his YouTube channel? Yeah, infinite content. Infinite content glitch. BFR. Well, maybe Marco, the other 90, don't like you. And they're watching because they just don't like you. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, you're right. That, it was that um, the Fauci and the Biden and all that stuff. The, you know, I, I guess it was about two years ago now where they stopped showing the numbers of th thumbs down. Now, the, the uh, person that is doing the videos can go into their, you know, their back office and see how many thumbs downs there were. Two person hate raid. So funny. How will I ever recover? But it's not displayed publicly anymore. And it's just the whole, you know, liberal woke, you know, snowflake. <laughs> generation that we're in everyone gets oh, a trophy do you guys have snowflake on your bingo sheet um and that's another sort of analogy and again marco suspend your recruiting uh idea here oh you know the, the fact that everybody another gets, bingo diagonally diagonally we did it gets a trophy that's what fuels that five by five by five that everybody wins everybody's equal it, everybody can do everything everybody does everything nobody quits 
everybody is motivated, everybody works hard, and, and we know that that's just not true. And and uh, they don't understand the difference between a mathematical... Hating on Marco and QAnon talking points and watching CC Suarez and Savannah Marie's videos, where is the fortune being built? Mathematical formula in the real world, just like the Joe Romar judge told the FTC lawyers, you know, there's no flaw in your math. This just isn't real. This is just made up numbers that have no uh, connection to reality. Um, and, and he threw them out of, <laughs> out of his courtroom. And, and, and Yeah, the libs ruined hate raids. So true, Sam here. <laughs> and told them, you know, with his own Thanks, Aristotle. Sort of sarcastic words, you're stupid. It's just incredible. So, oh, uh, oh, guess, there was one thing I forgot. Yeah. We're almost going to run out of time. Believe it or yeah. not, we're almost going to run out of time. Marco said one of his goons are is training uh, with using AI, our voices, so they'll be able to manipulate some of the things that we say. So, um, I just want to kind of reference for those people that are listening in. If you go to alwaysmarco.lol, so alwaysmarco.lol, you know, because he's a joke. We had a goon that actually did an AI video on Marco. So if you go scroll down, first one I've seen, AI video. And by the way, you'll be able to get those um, recordings of some of those voicemails that he's left us as well as some of the pictures. But if you scroll down on alwaysmarco.lol, you'll see the AI generated. So I think we beat him to the punch uh, video that was made um, and sent to me. So there we go. So back to you, Scott. Yeah, that sounds great. I'll look forward to looking at that after the show here. Um, I guess we can just wrap it up, Peter. I mean, I'll mention my Facebook page again because, like you said, we're almost to the top of the hour here. It, it really this this show has really flown by. It's it's gone fast. But I guess when you're talking about always oh, stupid, Marco, <laughs> time time flies and you're having fun, as they say. Um, so if you want real facts, you know, if you want to really see factually what's going on versus you know, all this hand wringing and, and emotional, you know, BS that Marco and all the other anti MLM Huns are spewing out. Um, go to Facebook.com slash Scott Tex Johnson. That's S C O T T T E X. <laughs> Another bingo. S O N. All one word. He's mentioned his Facebook and his website. I'm going to go ahead and count that as his email address. Wow. One, two, three, Four bingos. Insane. And you'll see three websites. You'll see uh, my YouTube channel. There's a couple of great items on my YouTube channel. One is uh, a guy that is talking about um, how much money is being made on the tools while he was still in. This is a really you know, rare instance. Now, he got kicked out within a month or two. I really do give them life, Dave Vaughn. I'm going to be sad when Scott and Peter die. Because it's like, damn, who will take up the mantle after that? <laughs> and I can go into more detail on another show about that. Um, but the other one is a, an actual recording of Rich DeVos, one of the two co-founders of Amway, back in 1983, <clears throat> talking about, and these are my words, but he was basically saying, we know you guys are making a ton of money on the tools and you better knock it off. And if you don't, there's going to be some real serious consequences. And it never happened. And we backed down. And I think Glenn said last week they had to back down. Well, they didn't really have to back down. They chose to back down. Certainly there would have been negative repercussions for their business volume, at least temporarily, if they um, had not backed down and actually enforced what they said. Um, but they were cowards too. They decided, no, we're going to continue this business to grow. Um, we're going to continue to scam These guys more are people NPCs. and just let it get, you know, completely out of control. Um, you know, get to over $11 billion a year. Oh yeah. Five bingos. I have a diagonal going this way from left to right, this way from right to left, uh, vertically, horizontally and horizontally insane. Wow which it's now down about half that volume, by the way, if you include inflation. So I, I do believe that the Internet is having an impact. It's not enough in my mind, um, but because they're still... <laughs> and Paz with a great impression. It's flown by. Yeah, always stupid. No question about it. Just always stupid. So yeah, here's my Facebook page. <laughs> still, you know, millions of people that are being scammed 
uh, by Amway alone. Um, and, and then if you look at all the other MLMs, it's probably tens of millions uh, around the world. Um, and, and so it's still a big problem. We need Glenn and, back. And we're not there yet. Um, but, you know, that just shows you proof that Amway was aware of it at the highest levels and decided to do nothing. So this isn't just an upline issue. It's also the Amway corporate issue um, that they're just not addressing. And neither is the FTC, right? We have all this all this information and evidence, and the FTC hasn't done anything really meaningful except for, you know, a couple MLMs here and there. Um, but nothing across the board. Um, so anyway, I could keep going on, but I'll we stop know. there and and uh, thank you again for the show. And we'll see you again. I guess it'll be um, our Monday night and Glenn's Tuesday morning, and we're going to start reviewing. We're going to start at the beginning, I think, of Marco's comments. You know, we did a couple shows on on Marco's presentation at the FTC MLM meeting. Wow, they still never got um, to it. But we didn't have anybody sort of doing a, a counterpoint, you know, the old, the old show, Point Counterpoint. Um, and Glenn has said he'd be happy to do that, and I'd be happy to um, revisit all of Marco's stupid um, statements in that uh, presentation. I, I would love to do that again. So that's the plan for what we're going to do Monday night uh, at the same time, uh, the same time on Monday night that we're doing the show on Saturday night. So I'll let you close it out there, Peter, and, um, and and we'll talk to you in a couple days. Yep. So for those people that want to listen to those things when they're live, if you go to buildingfortunesradio.com, All right, that's live, it. you'll be able to listen in, put it on our own Eastern. It'll be for a success you deserve and are willing to work for. So spread the word, tell a friend, join our newsletter, and go make a difference in your world. Wow. Look at that. That's amazing, bro. We could keep going on and on. I know. That's what you've been doing for 12 years. Always Lying Marco has been scamming us for three years with this AI-generated radio show. I wish I was smart enough to fucking do something like that. Wow. Because I'm always stupid. Wow, you guys. Amazing. Well, maybe once, maybe at some point in our lifetime, Scott and Peter will get to the point where they talk about my uh, conference speech Wow, 238 people watching. Thumbs up the stream. Why y'all all come in now when it's, when it's at the end? Fuck. Uh, well, watch the replay anyways and thumbs up the ting if you're here. Thumbs up the stream. Thumbs up the ting. Wow, that was a great stream. I mean, we got to get Glenn back on. Glenn is going to be on tomorrow. I'm not streaming tomorrow, but uh, I, will do, uh, I will try to talk with Glenn so that we can, we can get him on stream the next time. And maybe me and him will react to BFR together. I love it. All right, uh, appreciate you guys. Um, speaking of their mothers disowning them, Jared, uh, happy Mother's Day to all the goon moms out there. You know, appreciate you guys. Got through three hours of overtime. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Pam says, Pam says, it's flown by so fast. I've had a bath, washed dishes, washed dishes fallen asleep twice. Amazing. Appreciate you guys. I will see you. On Wednesday, I love Anti-Marco Radio. So true. Me too. Appreciate you guys. Uh, see you next time. Thank you so much for all the support. For real. Anna Marie Fella. Dude, all you guys that were dropping the memberships and shit. Insanity. Thank you guys. Oh, tomorrow's not Monday. My bad. Well, on Monday, they're going to be on there. Glenn's going to be on there. Appreciate it, guys. Love y'all. Join the Discord. My buttons are working tonight, so here, I'll put the link again in the chat. Join the Discord. If you're watching this replay, consider joining the Patreon memberships, whatever, whatever. Look, I love seeing all the members in the chat. It's almost completely green. I love it. I'm so humbled. Thank you, guys. Um, it's amazing doing what I do and making $50 a week, according to Scott and Peter. All right. Peace. Appreciate y'all. Peace out.